live. Okay, we are live, everybody. So, welcome to the Gravity Max live stream. This is episode four of season two. And today is January 26th. It is a Sunday, and we are 7.297% of the way through 2020. What do you think of that? This has been a pretty good 7.29% max. <laughs> yeah. Definitely some of the best times of my life have hmm. been in the 7.29%. I mean, that's I what I got to say. I don't know why, but that figure both seems too high and too low at the same time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is the nature of time. Um,. So anyways, today we are talking about the technologies of warfare over the years, and we have our friend Johan here. Hello. And uh, he knows a thing or two about history, so this is going to be a fun story. Oh, yeah. You guys have seen the title. Today yep. we're going to be talking about the technology of war. So this is mainly going to be a history episode, whereas mm -hmm. uh, the other... The majority of our other episodes are science related, mm -hmm. but we're still going to employ some scientific topics yeah. as uh, a lot of the technologies that we see, especially in recent years, are related to modern day science. Mm. So this is definitely going to be an interesting stream. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And let's go right into the plugs. Sure. All right, so this video is not intended for children under 13 years old. If you are under 13 years old, please do not watch this video as the topics we discuss are meant for those with at least a high school level of education. If you are not 13, you will not understand the scientific topics discussed in this video. So with that insurance out of the way, uh, <laughs> visit the Gravity Max website. Uh, it's a <laughs> Google Sites website. And <laughs> the link is... High quality. Mm-hmm. And the link is in the description. Also, you can follow Gravity Max on social media, which we've got the three platforms up here, and the links for those are also in the description. So if you want to follow us, then you can do that. So also visit, also follow Sebastian on social media. Uh, visit mm -hmm. <laughs> at Carl Marksman on Instagram. And do we still have that one picture up? Yes, I'm actually going to re-upload it in a better resolution, in mm -hmm. a higher resolution. <laughs> nice. So, that's great. And then there's also Sebastian's YouTube channel, where we have some of his videos, all under 128 seconds, of course. Yes, I explain um, any topics. Right now, I've been doing just science, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to expand um, my range a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to be explaining topics in under 128 seconds because if you can't explain a topic in under 128 seconds, you don't really know it. Yep, that should be your so. slogan. I think you can make a slogan on your channel description. I think you I think can. I can. That. Yeah, so definitely check out those videos because while those videos are on this channel, you should check them out on his channel. Because that channel and, plug wasn't under 128 seconds. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I'll so. break your neck in under 128 <laughs> seconds. All right then. <laughs> because um, anyways, yeah. Make sure to give him some views, and the links are in the description. So then we have a truly dead rock, which is available on Amazon, and the link is in the description. Like actually, right now. Usually, I have kind of forgotten to put it in the description, but it is currently there at this moment. So you can go visit that. Bam. Yeah. Boom. And <laughs> so make sure to add comments in the chat if you want to tell us anything. And we will respond to you uh, as quickly as we can. So technology of war. This is an interesting topic because technology is always and I think inevitably used in war at some point. Now, a lot of detractors of progress say this is why we shouldn't invent new technologies, but I'm sorry to say to those people, that just really isn't a good argument because if you don't build it, someone else will, and someone else will misuse it for war. So technology is generally used for the good, like medical technology, helping people live, and... 
um, space technology, and just in general, yeah. more technology is better for people. It improves quality of life, but there are some, you know, deviations to this yeah. general rule when technology is used in warfare, and it is unfortunate, but that is what humanity does. But it what isn't is a reason what to was stop the quote technology. that I said before stream? It was like, like a couple of days ago. It was it um, takes a hundred years takes or something. Humans, yeah. yeah, yeah. It takes humans a hundred years to in, invent something, and it takes them a hundred days to turn that into yep. a weapon. And that's very something. true. Actually, once we get to the airplane, it's pretty. This is a pretty incredible fact to me, is that the airplane was invented only in 1903, and it was used in World War One by uh, like you know 1914, 1915 which is such a short span of time between invention and use in war. But, yeah, so it's a bit pessimistic. Uh, I think this is interesting, of course, the technology of war. It is fascinating because technology does progress faster when nations are invested in using them for warfare, which is unfortunate. So you do get more progress, but then at the same time, it's also used negatively. So, you know... Uh, loud keyboard there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. Yeah, your microphone is just inside your mm. spacebar. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought that there was Sebastian. Go. I was gonna make fun of him, but yeah, no, that was me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, oh, trying to put the blame on me, Max. Yeah, I was gonna. You see, after all these years, you don't want to make fun of the guest as much as you make fun of your co-host. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you can make fun of me. Okay. Well, we're going to we're going to get let's get started. So, yeah, let's get let's get into our actual first topic. technologies. So the first <laughs> technologies. <laughs> uh, so these are the first ever weapons. Mm -hmm. And as you can expect, um these are uh primitive uh, to our standards of what weapons are because mm -hmm. now we obviously have assault rifles and yep. uh, tanks which we're going to talk about and all these weapons but these are the ones that had to come first yep. so that we could make cooler and more dangerous weapons mm -hmm. you yeah. know so it's, it's fascinating because yeah. like uh, our first topic is spears if mm. you want to switch to it oh, sure. and it's cool to see that we started with spears and then we got all the way to the nuclear bomb. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that is crazy. It's, it is quite an escalation. Mm -hmm. So I would and like to addre the... address chat quickly. Yeah, um, go ahead. Uh, Jam McCarthy says, or Jam McCarthy 1975 says, he he. He said that at 5.05 p.m. I don't know what he was saying it in reference to, but he he. So. <laughs> he's just a happy guy. <laughs> I think that's he's true. Just, he's laughing it up in chat. <laughs> yep. So, we salute you, Jam McCarthy, yeah. 1975. He, he. Anyways, and yeah. as well, like, what, what I was going to say is that mm -hmm. if you look at the dates, because we've included the dates that all these were either, like, uh, created, or invented, or, like, used in warfare, mm -hmm. the dates keep getting closer and closer yeah. together as we go on, as more and more um, weapons are, like, demanded. Obviously, mm. because when world wars break out, which we're obviously going to talk about, um, the demand for weapons and the demand for innovation in warfare like goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see that especially with World War One. But, of course, we start off with spears, which is the ooga booga technology <laughs> of big sharp stick, maybe with rock, rock also sharp. Mm. <laughs> um I actually saw a, a little video of someone recreating a Neanderthal type – uh, I almost said sphere. <laughs> sphere. Uh, Neanderthal type spear, uh -huh. and they were actually pretty aerodynamic. It's kind hmm. of um, kind of fascinating and impressive that like the the Neanderthals were not that smart of a people, hmm. but the spears they made actually flew decently well. And that's what made them very good hunters because yeah. the first spears were used for hunting mm -hmm. until humans realized, hold on, I could use this to <laughs> throw at Jerry. Humans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so pretty basic technology. 
just projectile uh, ballistics, if you want to look at it from that perspective. But yeah. they did. And there's that other thing that, um, like, humans and like the human line of uh like animals they're the only ones that can throw something with precision mm. like no other animal can throw something with precision which is why yeah. we enjoy sports so much <laughs> yeah because that's a lot of it is just throwing with precision mm -hmm. no other animal can actually do that which is huh. what gave the neanderthals and the other cavemen a massive advantage over everything else yeah. because they could just huck this spear down the savanna and like mm. take out <laughs> yeah. yeah a mammoth you yeah know? without and having to come like it. dangerously close to it yeah another important thing about humans is that like we're good at endurance running and jogging like no other yeah. animal can do that like our sweat glands that other animals don't really have most animals just sprint and then they're done but we can jog for quite a while I mean, it might be unpleasant, mm -hmm. especially <laughs> if you do not do it often, or you might be one of those weird, like, health nut people that are like, every day at 5 a.m., I'm going to get up, and I'm going to run for an hour, um, and we salute you. Cardio is important. Yeah. If, if you have the constitution to do that, then you know what? Good for you, but it More is a little you. abnormal, I, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm just salty that yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so the first spears, as you can see down here, were made mm -hmm. around 300,000 uh, BCE. Yep. Um, there's some evidence saying that spears were actually made um, maybe even a little before that. Mm -hmm. But the, like what we would determine as spears, yeah. like typical like stick throwing yeah. with like sharp rock or just mm. sharpened stick that's around 300 um bce or yeah. bc and um that's how we did the dates for a lot of these is by the actual definition mm. of what they are yeah. because like crude types of these existed but it wasn't until like it fit our definition of what it is yeah, like I bet uh, if you think of spear fishing, there were probably tribes around before this that just mm. found naturally sharp sticks or they could have even worked them. But I mean, sometimes you can find a sharp stick and then you can just use that um, and for just simple tasks like spear fishing. Uh, so, yeah, so it's interesting what you consider inventing this far back because, yeah, some of this stuff you could find, but you could make them better by engineering. So it's interesting. And, I mean, 300,000 years ago, quite a bit of time for humans to actually evolve, you know? Like, this is interesting to look at the yeah. path of human evolution with simple tool use and stuff. So, yeah. Johan, have you ever gone crazy on a Friday night and just made your own spear and hooked it? I have not. But uh, <laughs> now that you say that, that might be something I have to try. Mm, definitely invite me over when you do that. I will. Oh my yeah. gosh. Sebastian, that raises the question, <laughs> have you done that? I feel like... Moving on, we have daggers <laughs> and swords. <laughs> All right. All right. These were created around 300 BCE. Mm -hmm. And 3, again, 3, we're using... Yeah. Our the like the definition of what a dagger yeah. or what a sword is. These were made around the same time, which is why we put them on the same slide. Mm -hmm. Daggers are just short swords, yeah. but they're not short swords. They're just shorter swords, mm. but they're not short swords. Yeah. Short swords are actually swords, just a little short. It's odd. It's weird. So why can't a dagger be a longer knife? Uh, this man is a philosopher. <laughs> I am. I think, I think. I think we can accept that a dagger is just a long knife. Well, I, what I is a sword? Is, is a is, sort of gargantuan knife? Well, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is is a dagger? Sorry. Think about this though. A knife only has one sharp edge, whereas daggers and swords are sharp on both sides. Mm, true. You know, true. The blade tapers off on one end for the knife, and the other end is like. It's thin, but it's flat, not meant for cutting. Like, have you tried to use a knife upside down? It does not work very well. Uh, mm. So I think the <laughs> distinction, I think daggers and swords would be part of the same family because they're two-sided. They have blades on both sides. 
but a dagger I would say would not be a bigger knife because uh, it has a dual two-sided blade. Yeah, that's just I'm just going off the pictures, mm. but <laughs> yeah, nice job. Thank you. Um, Johan, I know you're a knife guy. What kind of knives do you have? What kind of knives do I have? Um, oh boy, you really put me on the spot. Um, I own just like a, I guess a standard pocket knife. Um, there is a knife that is, it's made in Alaska. It's called an Ulu, U-L-U. Mm. And I have like a pocket knife version of an Ulu. It's used for cooking and for slicing up fruits and vegetables. Mm. Um, I also own a karambit because, I don't, I don't know, it's cool. <laughs> Can you do the spin tricks? I can, yeah. Nice. I I mastered that. I guess I didn't master it, but I uh, reason I bought it is because I was like, "Yo, this is cool. <laughs> I might as well uh, try to learn this. Maybe I can, you know, impress some people with my amazing knife skills." <laughs> Maybe the, your karambit skills can even make its way into our next stream, which is the science of romance. <laughs> Yep. Is that actually the next topic? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, it's wow. funny. It's um, yeah, we're gonna pre-record anyway. that stream for those of you that are going to be watching it. Just because I am going to be in California, so we will not be able to do it live. But it'll still be a fun stream, and <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. We've set up some of the slides, and you're in for a surprise that episode, right? Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just a fun, fun <laughs> surprise. <laughs> I'm already intrigued. Right. Yep. Um, but what I wanted to call out here, what's mm -hmm. very interesting, is that swords are like a global thing. There's so many different kinds of swords. I actually have a katana in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at it right now. Um, and, yeah, that's an example. Mm -hmm. But... Like that, like katanas are swords from Japan, and they look wildly different than swords from like Scotland or like the UK or that part of the world, mm -hmm. or even like Viking swords. There's all these different styles of it, but each culture was able to come up with the idea that sharp metal is good for stab. Yeah, basically. So there's so, like the uh, scimitars from Middle East. Mm -hmm. There's all that, like serrated blades, all that yeah. kind of thing. But every single civilization was able to, like, create that. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. So did this, what age of metallurgy did this start with? I know there's always... Uh, it started in the Bronze, Bronze Age. Bronze Age, okay. I was about to say that one. Yeah, so they used, uh, usually iron, right? Um, I guess also they could have used Yeah, bronze. Yeah, well, yeah, most commonly... They would use iron, but mm -hmm. the idea of swords started with the Bronze Age yeah. and then got perfected um, mm -hmm. mostly by the Europeans mm -hmm. in the Iron Age. Yeah. Actually, yeah, the one on the, the right looks like it could be bronze or some like alloy of copper because it's all green, and that's I how copper... I was just going to yeah. say that. Yeah. yeah. Cause it, copper that actually... Like that. that one... That picture on the right mm -hmm. is a Turkish sword, ah. and that was cast from arsenical bronze. Oh, arsenic, wow. And it was inlaid with silver as mm -hmm. well, actually. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Metal and that's where the gone. first swords actually originated, was mm -hmm. from Turkey. Hmm. See, I'm sure someone along the way probably like passed between continents and brought swords with them. Because uh -huh. I'm sure that, like, once, you know, the word got around that, hey, we got these new weapons, like, each, as you said before, each place then went to perfect their own versions of it. Like, you know, England with the broadsword or Japan with the katana. Like, they found what worked for them and what worked best with their climate. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, you know, that's pretty important that each place was able to find their own unique way to make this their own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely yeah do you own a sword johan do i own a sword uh i do not actually. do you want to own a sword do i want to own a sword what exactly does that mean <laughs> i think it's a pretty straightforward question do you have a sword lying around what's your definition of lying around uh-oh 
Oh, I, I don't know, but sure, I would love a sword. Mm. Yeah, the only blades I own are like <laughs> I, kitchen. I'm really blades. confused here. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> Max, what are yes. your thoughts on daggers and swords? Would you like a sword? I, I don't think so. I, my cousin has. <laughs> My cousin it's has a, hard a katana, yeah. I think, and it's yeah. So it's it's interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't think I I just don't see the practicality. But I don't know. I just have you know kitchen utensils. Those are the sharpest objects. So, um, mm. yeah, I know, kind of boring. Oh, and yeah, I, I guess scissors. now that you say it, I do have an awful lot of knives because uh-huh. of all the cooking that I do. Yeah. Um. I have the entire knife rack, mm-hmm. you know, that everyone has to have. I even have the sharpener, mm-hmm. and I can, like, sharpen the knife, like, decently fast, huh. you know? Wow. Yeah. I mean, all, the, all the cooking knives in my house are dull. Mm. But. Yeah. <laughs> Feel me. Wow. That is a different kind of sword. That is. Some would call, some would call it a saber. Uh, <laughs> yep. Well, that's that interesting. From? So, <laughs> wait, wonder, hold up, hold up, hold yeah. up. <laughs> I wonder if that sounds. <laughs> <like. laughs> oh no, my gosh! I, I just thought that you was a good time to throw that in there. For Discord. Uh, <laughs> you got the pro version, right? Of that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So we've got a lot of good voices to use. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um. Should I go to the next slide? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a next slide. Okay. The catapults. So this is this is a fun one. Uh, I think people also like trebuchets. Pretty similar, right? If, if well, you're pretentious. Yeah. Well, actually, I think there's, there's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, I think no, I forget which is which, but one of them relies on, like, elastic strength so it's like you pull something back on a rubber band or something stronger but if you're doing it in class you know what i mean like you pull something back and then you release it whereas the trebuchet actually uses a weight and a lever so when Mm. you release it it's the mass pulling down on one end and slinging the other thing up on the other end kind of like when you and your younger brother are on the seesaw and you just send him absolutely flying that that's kind of what a trebuchet is, the one with the mass. Yeah. So mm. so yeah. This is an interesting one. They use, Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Right, go with what you're saying. I have an interesting fact about okay. this one. They used catapults or trebuchets, whichever one. They would, you know, hurl large like projectiles at fortresses and knock them down just with the sheer mass and momentum of say like a huge boulder but they would also in there were a few instances where they would do something like take like the heads of like other fallen soldiers and like send them over into the fortress well, that yeah, they were defending. that was actually my um my fact yeah pretty so, messed up with the invention of a catapult mm-hmm. came the first ever biological warfare yep and basically, the knights uh, would take their dying, like when they're sieging a castle, mm-hmm. there's like walls that of impenetrable stone. They can't get in. The gates are all sealed. Like the moat thing is up, right? Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not open. Yeah. You got the moat and all the, the crocodiles. Yeah. The, moat. <laughs> the crocodiles. And so what they did is they took their dirty, disgusting swine mm. and. There are other cattle that were like diseased. Mm-hmm. They slaughtered them and they would put them on the catapult and shoot it, like just yeet it into the <laughs> castle. Mm-hmm. And because of that, the corpses of the cattle would go into the castle walls and basically get everyone on the inside sick. Yep. So that's the first ever form of biological warfare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I appreciate your use of the word yeet, because I think that one word mm. really sums up this technology, yeah. the catapult. Oh, yeah. uh, if I was to put it into haiku form, mm-hmm. cattle go big yeet mm. into the 
catapult yeet. Knights okay. get sick and die. Great. That was beautiful. Thank you. I think you're, <laughs> wow, real poetry champion right here. Um, Have you I'm ever impressed. considered writing a book of poetry? <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe now I am. <laughs> yeah, so, anyways, yeah, the catapult. Let's see, anything mm. else on the catapult? Um, Johan, do you have a catapult? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I do not, but I do. Do you want one? Like, oh. oh, wow, <laughs> we're back to this. Um, uh, sure. Catapult price. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right now, you can buy a fully assembled, that's uh, a model. I don't want models. I want a real catapult. My favorite thing is, uh, I model, think model, model, model. Sebastian, no, get, have, you, have you ever been to? Have you, you ever been to one of those? Fifteen ninety six. Have you ever been to one of those events? The Hexbug Vex Robotics catapult. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that that is exactly what they would have used. Have either when they were have castles. either of you ever been to one of those events? Like in November ish, so all the pumpkins have been used up for jack o' lanterns, and they're the companies are like, yeah, we're not gonna sell any more of these, so they give them for a very reduced price to some organization that has a catapult in their possession, and then they just launch the pumpkins across the field. Have you ever been to one of those events? They're really fun. Yeah, they. I've never I've never been to one, but I, I've seen videos of it i think sometimes they let you even bet on which pumpkin will go the farthest which is <laughs> <laughs> forget oh, no. betting on <laughs> horse races i found or something <laughs> anything else <laughs> bet on the catapult pumpkin which will go the um farthest. i have something to add mm -hmm. this go ahead. from 2008 the title of the article is Full-size Roman siege artillery offered on eBay. <laughs> <gasps> how much? How much? How much? How much? How much? You think the bidding would have gone on since 2008? I'm trying to see. <laughs> no, no, no. Who bought it and uh, how much did they buy it for uh, so I can triple that price? Mm. Starting bid is 25,000 euros. <laughs> What what is that like a, a buck fifty? <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, euros! Wow. Ooh, just body the entire <laughs> EU. You did. It's uh, twenty seven thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yeah, euros. You know, in my book, uh, the EU and the US have gotten a united currency, so it's the euro dollar. Mm. and yeah i like that yeah yeah it's interesting yeah. inflation has uh since the book takes place 83 years in the future everything is four times as expensive so they use a hundred dollar bills right, yeah like yeah. their 20s and like 20s like their mm. fives so it's interesting but yeah the catapult but the the pumpkin thing, right? It's an example of how technology can also be used for good as well as for bad. I mean, for launching pumpkins across a field, the goodness of that is questionable. However, we live in a it society. brings joy to people. So I think that makes it good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, who doesn't like to see, you know, when you see a big rock, you're like, mm. oh, you just think you're a big rock that no one can ever move you. Mm. You strap the big rock onto one of these bad boys. That yep. rock is going to be going like Amelia Earhart, let me tell you. <laughs> yep. It's going to disappear yeah. over the Pacific? Oh, my god! Oh, yeah. <laughs> you mean the Atlantic? <laughs> wasn't, it, uh, wasn't it over the Atlantic or was it the Pacific? It was the, I think it was the Pacific. What? I thought it was the Atlantic. Are you an expert? Are you an I'm, expert I'm in not Amelia an expert. Earhart? I'm pretty sure I'm it was not. the Atlantic. She was going from America to I don't think we brought America you on this stream as an – Okay, okay, okay. Maybe it is the Pacific Ocean. What? It yeah, was okay. not. Central Pacific, yep. Okay, I got you. I did it. Wait, it was? All right. It was the Pacific. What? No way. Okay, well, I feel stupid now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, wow. I am. Well, way to go, Johan. Wow. <laughs> Amelia Earhart expert. If you want more oh. Amelia Earhart related content, go to his channel linked in the description. Yep. His channel is, is in the description. Yeah. Yeah, your channel is in the description. 
It's the oh my god, it first is. link. Yeah, yeah. We, it's the first link. Yep. Whoa. We give we so give our special. guests very special what? treatment. I got, yeah. <laughs> I got fifth link. I got oh. fifth and sixth <laughs> link. How do you not validate parking in the description? Apologies, apologies. Uh, I needed to put the Gravity Max social media first. <laughs> Look at this guy taking up three parking spaces. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is this Anyways. is for both of us, okay? The Gravity Max social media is meant to draw in viewers to this live stream that you co-host. So there, uh, mm. it's it's good, okay? Okay, let's move on. All to right. Wait, 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 I just want to add one last thing on the catapult, which is interesting. Yes. So this is over. So this is over like less than one thousand BC or whatever, like before then. I don't know what I'm saying. Is it the great, the greater than or whatever sign? It's it's really throwing me off here with the fact that BCs go backwards. But anyways, um, this demonstrates simple machine use. Uh, the trebuchet with the with the lever, you know, and then the catapult. I'm pretty sure there's a simple machine like this, based on elasticity. I don't know, but the trebuchet is definitely a simple machine, you know, when you learn that with levers. So this is interesting because first we started with just pointy sticks, then we went to pointy rocks, then we went to pointy metals, and now we've actually got something that resembles, or not even resembles, but this is basic, like, you know, in fifth grade or whatever, when they teach you the simple machines, this is, this is that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. we can see have things beginning to ramp up. Have you ever been launched out of a uh, catapult, Max? I have not, as evidenced by my presence here. Would you like to be? I would not like to be. You ever been shot out of a cannon? I have not, evidenced by my presence here. <laughs> Let's talk about cannons. Okay. <laughs> so, so, as you can yeah. see, cannons popped up around 1200 BCE. Mm -hmm. um, cannons, again, pretty universal thing, if I yeah. do say so myself. Because mm. pirates uh, came yep. from all over. Like when, when you hear, when you hear cannon, you think pirates, but mm. originally they were used on land yeah. and, uh, in that kind of warfare. Yeah. And if, if you look at it, it's all of this, like the catapult, especially mm -hmm. is ranged like daggers yeah. and swords would be the anomaly here. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you have like a massive, a massive sword. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, Everything here is ranged. Like spears are obviously precision weapons, mm -hmm. but the catapult is the first mortar type weapon, mm. which is like go in that general direction and <laughs> yeah, pray. Right? <laughs> cannons. Cannons kind of combine the spear and the catapult in, mm. in a beautiful way because it's a precision shot that still is like just go in that general vicinity yeah. and we'll be good. You know? Yeah, so cannons are interesting because they spread with the spread of gunpowder out of China. So China, mm. around this time in 1200, oh wait, 1200 BCE. Oh, okay, never mind, I thought that was AD. Carry on. <laughs> but, well, no, gunpowder, wait, is that BCE? Wait, no, I think I think that's wrong. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, that's supposed, supposed to be, uh, to be AD. Okay. Yeah, that's supposed to be AD, that's a typo. Okay, okay, good, good. Because yeah, now... No, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've redeemed my Amelia Earhart. Yeah, no, you're right. Lapse of yeah, knowledge. Right. So, okay. So... Uh, I, I guess I'm still down. I, I gotta come back. <laughs> I gotta come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so cannons, right? Uh, Gunpowder mm. spread out of China. And around this time, this was when the Mongolian Empire, you know, the Mongols, they stretched all the way across Asia from the east all the way like up onto Europe, you know? And so they really, the unification of that area under the Mongolian Empire uh, allowed the Silk Road to actually spread gunpowder a lot faster than it would have if everything was disjointed. Because whenever you have to cross another country border, you don't know if that country is just like, we don't like you for some reason. But if you stay in one country throughout your travels, then, you know, as long as that one country likes you then you're good so the so gunpowder was able to spread out of china around this time period and arrive in europe so this is interesting through the silk road and everything so that's why cannons really came about in this time period so yeah mm. 
Mm. Yeah, and cannons. Like, mm. one of the first, like, great weapons, I would say. Because mm-hmm. if you look at guns, if you look at, like, any other kind of weapons, kind of like, like, even, like, missiles, yep. cannons were the perfected, at the time they were perfected, the perfected form of projectile weapons. Because, yeah. like I said, you go back, you look at the catapult. If Yeah, if you put a big enough rock in the catapult, you're going to decimate everything in that, like, general vicinity. Mm-hmm. But with cannons, you get to, like, be like, I want it through that window. You know, I want it, <laughs> I want it past those trees. Yeah. Right? I want it at my neighbor. Yeah. Pat. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's, these are, I feel like these are je- definitely show a kind of shift in how, people were using weapons because they can the cannons were originally used as siege weapons as mm-hmm. were the catapults but then they put cannons on like ships and then like pirate ships and all yeah. that which was definitely versatile like you couldn't put a cannon on a ship mm-hmm. or any of that yeah well also so i just think yeah. it, it shows a definite yeah also just quality has greatly improved with cannons with the use of gun powder as a propellant rather than just you know elasticity or mass you know levers it's a lot more powerful and it's a lot more reusable because if you think about it right uh say your catapult you're you know pulling it back and instead of just bending the wood just completely like snaps and then no more catapult and you got to build a new one but here with your cannons you can just load up these like iron spheres, you know, just heavy iron spheres. Mm-hmm. You can just go one after another, light it, launch it, and then put another one in. And I think you could load a cannon at a quicker rate than you could a catapult. So. Well, the thing about loading a cannon is that you've got a rod that you need to use mm-hmm. to shove the ball all the way down to the back. Because mm-hmm. if just putting it in the front, the ball yeah. wouldn't go all the way down there. So you've got to... I think before you get the ball down there, you got to put the actually the package of gunpowder also has to go down there because mm. when you light the fuse, it goes down, ignites the gunpowder, and launches the ball out. But uh-huh. you've got to shove all that down the entire barrel length of the cannon before yeah. you're actually able to fire. Mm. And uh, it's the same thing with muskets as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely long reload times, but I th- I would say better than the catapult, right? I would assume so. Yeah. So, yeah. That's cannons. Should I go to yeah. the next one? Cannons are cool. Yeah. <laughs> I yep. want a cannon. You want a cannon. Yes. My neighbor, Pat. <laughs> Awfully. Oh, boy. Nosy. Is he the one with Especially the solar panels and that car and... <laughs> Just the yes. one across the street? Yes. Oh, okay. I guess Pat. there won't be any more distractions <laughs> when we... Pat, who <laughs> often comes by to give me literally an entire head of lettuce. <laughs> I kid you. I hear the door. This is totally tough, ladies uh-huh. and gentlemen, if you want me to go ahead. Doorbell rings. Yeah. I'm like, okay, strange. No one rings the doorbell anymore. Mm. But you know what? I'm saying, fine. If it's a serial killer... Fine, sure, I'll accept that. I'll deal with that when I get to it, mm-hmm. right? So I go up to the door, I open it, right, and Pat's there, and he's like, <laughs> lettuce! And he runs. <laughs> well, you can week. launch that head of lettuce back at him. So right? because of that... Roughly the size of a cannonball. Next slide. Okay. <laughs> Tune in next week to find out how we bailed Sebastian out of jail for assaulting <laughs> his neighbor with a cannon. Exactly. Because of that incident... Are you on the next slide? I am oh, on the next what? slide. I yeah. now own a gun. <laughs> we have, that's a joke. For yeah. legal reasons, that's a joke. Le- <laughs> yeah. So we have guns or muskets. So this is really just an evolution of the cannon, except smaller and therefore more portable. You know, it's like cell phones or laptops to the old-fashioned computers, which I, I find interesting. Because you got these cannons, and they're really heavy. You got to wheel them around, and it takes many people to get them around. 
and if you're under siege, you can't move it quickly, like, you know, if there's an ambush. Uh, so to improve on that, they made smaller weapons. They made, uh, and it's really the same, not the same, but it's a similar mechanism if you think about it. You have um, a bullet, right, which is just a smaller cannonball, except slightly shaped differently, but it's a projectile, right? And you also have the gunpowder to propel it. So this just makes it easier to use for the average person, the average soldier in a war, because they can hold it and it, I think they were still pretty heavy at first, but you could at least hold it, um, which was interesting. Yeah. Well, the first ever guns were called hand cannons. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, because that's essentially what they, they had no reference for, oh my God, I just, I just searched up guns <laughs> for the, uh, reference article. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Love that that's now worse. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like um the nuclear blast radius website. You know that site that calculates the nuclear oh, blast radius? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's on my search history. <laughs> just because I needed to do some calculations for a book. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or slash me. Sure. Yeah, no, for a book. Because... They use nuclear weapons in a book. Ooh, of mine. spoilers! Oh Jeez. yeah, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> I, I think any book about humanity will involve nuclear weapons at some point. Maybe not in the events of the book, but you just have to think. Humans in this current situation are going to use nuclear weapons just because I don't know. Mm. It's it's a lot of power, but that's later. Mm. So. We'll get back to that. Yeah. But again, with most of these things, this technology was invented in China. Mm. Yay. <laughs> Give it up for China. Nice Anyways, job. so by the 12th century, techno this um, the hand cannon technology spread through Asia, and then it went and went over to Europe by like around the um mm -hmm. like 13th century so yeah. that's why we have this state down here because the they were really crude when they were first produced yeah in China, and really and heavy it was it was late it was late 12th uh century mm -hmm. and once it made its way over to europe that's when people started innovating on it yeah and it became obviously one of the biggest markets which is why you have all these different gun brands, all these different gun producers, yeah. all of that. And it's like, it's a common theme that we explore. Whenever anything becomes an industry, innovation mm -hmm. goes like through the roof, Yeah, which is why you have all these different models mm -hmm. because they were, people were like, Hey, this is useful in this situation. Which mm -hmm. then like the rifle you have here would obviously be for like long range. So if you need yeah. to shoot something at like 50 to a hundred yards, like a hand cannon's not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So they began using smaller pellets or yeah. essentially smaller cannonballs, but that got refined into bullets. Mm -hmm. And well, before they refined that, they did uh, like shotgun shells and mm -hmm. all that, because those are essentially just tiny little pellets, which yeah. you can, refer to as cannonballs if you really yeah. want to if you look at the etymology <laughs> yep. of the invention mm -hmm. but that's really the history of it is really so many different gun producers and it's still one of the biggest industries in like america yeah. and obviously america is the biggest like exporter of that mm. yeah right and like as we talked about with the cannons uh and the catapults like reloading became even faster mm -hmm. when yeah. they introduced guns like this. Um, I actually remember this is kind of funny from fifth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy came in dressed as a revolutionary soldier mm. into our school and just shot you <laughs> with a musket. <laughs> he had a blank. He was like, <laughs> red coat. <laughs> Don't shoot until exactly. you see the whites of their yeah. eyes. It was, That's what he was but doing. It was, it was so weird because he had a musket with him. Mm -hmm. right? <gasps> but like, but like it, I don't think it was a real musket. I, th I think it was just a piece of wood, mm -hmm. uh, wooden metal. 
but it, it it looked pretty real and so he explained to us um like what what they would do mm. and what it was like being a soldier and so then now this is going to sound suggestive but you can see next to the barrel of the musket there's this little rod that sticks out and mm-hmm. that's called a ramrod mm. and what that is used for <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> Um, well, that's used for us the same thing as we can, <laughs> being able to, uh, shove the, the musket ball as well as the, mm-hmm. uh, gunpowder down the barrel. Yeah. But still reloading for the Did best. he explain this to you? <laughs> he did, yeah, yeah. Like, here's the ramrod! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Legendary. <laughs> so, so, even for the best soldiers, um reloading would still take 14 to 15 seconds per mm. shot and that actually brings us into our next slide how oh. you know the rate of fire increased so much over time hmm. yeah all right i do want to add um it's interesting it took a while from the 13th and 14th centuries for these to get used a lot more in war because at first like war used to be conducted on horseback right and it yeah. was too heavy for someone on a horse. Like, it was too inconvenient. It would be hard to, like, hold on to these heavy weapons while on horseback. So, I mean, eventually they phased out the horse, but also eventually they made these lighter and more convenient. So, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Well, uh, well, actually, yeah, yeah, go on to the next one. I said everything I want. Okay, cool. I'm freaking out. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> oh, no. Well, so World War I, uh, also known as the Great War in that time. <laughs> Actually wasn't so great. It was not. It was pretty awful. It was pretty, pretty awful. bad. Yeah. You know, like, we're going around like the one out of, we're going F range of, mm. out of wars and like badness. It, it's, it's a big bad. Well, you know how the 1910s were with that sardonic, no, cynical I comedy. Don't. <laughs> you're saying that like oh i saw it down at the street like at 1910 mm-hmm. like you were there like with the thing with the hat you had the hat you at, in in the 19th you were there yeah so was lloyd and we were all down there driving our 1910 car actually and they were called automobiles you owe, you still owe me 20 dollars, which in today's money is like thirteen thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no i don't know what the 1910s yeah. were like okay well you probably <laughs> hurt no never mind um but world war one I, I think that's probably the best anachronism for a time traveler to make right yeah if they are yeah in the period before like 1930 right uh if you go back in time to 1920 or something and you really want to cause a disturbance right and someone says like, oh, I was a soldier, or like, I'm just back from Europe, right? And then you say, oh, fighting in World War One. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how you cause a disturbance. That's how you... You what? <laughs> that's how you cause an Avenger, Avenger level threat. That's what you do. So, yeah, pro tip to um, me. Uh, Johan. Yeah. Yes. You said that you know quite a bit about the Treaty of Versailles. And before mm. we move on... You want to talk about that a little? You want to rant? Rant. All right. Yes. I would love to rant about the Treaty of Versailles. So the Treaty of Versailles, um, as I'd assume everyone watching, you know, should have a high school level of education, uh, should have learned about how the Treaty of Versailles was created because Germany lost. Mm -hmm. um, And the Treaty of Versailles... The Treaty of Versailles Versailles basically was uh, created to kind of sanctioned Germany and, you know, put the punishments that the allies felt were necessary to bestow upon them. Mm -hmm. Uh, The treaty actually, though, wrongfully blamed uh, Germany for the entire war when essentially it was not their fault for starting it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They had, you know, it was actually a group of assassins from, uh, I actually forget the country that they were from. I think uh, Serbia. 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 No, no, Serbia was where the guy was from. Oh well, I think I think it was that. The... I think it was that they were a Serbian group, but the the man who actually killed uh, Franz Ferdinand was from 
uh, Bosnia and yeah, it was Bosnia, Gofnia, yeah. you know. The, the yeah, group was from Gofnia, Bosnia, but the guy was Serbian. Yeah. Is actually what it was. Yeah. Gavrilo Princip was Serbian. Yeah. yeah. So Princip. he assassinated the Archduke, and then war broke out between Austria Hungary and Bosnia. Mm hmm. And Germany basically got dragged into it because they were allied with Austria Hungary. Mm -hmm. And also Bosnia had powerful allies, which then dragged them into it. Or I think it, it was well. Serbia, right? They declared war on Serbia. And then I, it was Russia. Russia was. Because I remember Russia really liked Serbia. Um, yeah, while. This is actually. If you go a little bit further back from World War One, if you go to the Crimean War, uh, Russia was fighting the Ottoman Empire to take control of uh, Serbia because Serbia was like Eastern European, so it was like a Christian nation. And Russia had been declared like the protector of all Christians. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Uh, the, like, kings of, or the Tsars of they, Russia. Of all the Slavs. They were the protector of the, uh, all the Slavs. Oh, all the Slavs. I thought yeah. it was, like, Christians, too. Like, maybe Slavic Christians, like, Orthodox. Something like that. Whoa, Whoa um, I'm getting, I'm getting confused out here. Yeah, you are? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the, um... Hold on. Here, let me look it up. I yeah. thought they were... Were, were they Christian? Yeah, Russia was orth it's Orthodox uh, yeah. Russian. It's like kind of Orthodox Greek, but they Russia had its own thing, and because they thought the kings or the Tsars, they thought that they were you know ordained by God. So, mm. protector right. of all. It's called Pan Slavism, a movement which crystallized in the mid nineteenth century. Mm -hmm. And it is the political ideology concerned with the advancement of the integrity and unity for the Slavic speaking. Hmm. Yeah. So they felt that it was their duty to you know, defend these peoples. I don't know if it had anything so to do with religion. What did the Treaty of Versailles do to Germany specifically? Oh, yes. So they had to reduce their military. Hmm. They were not allowed to have a navy whatsoever. They had to destroy all of their ships. Um, they had to pay a tremendous amount the damages that were caused to mainly France because they just got absolutely destroyed because mm. I don't know, France isn't very good at fighting wars apparently. <laughs> um, and uh, they, yeah. um, they were blamed for the start of the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Treaty of Versailles also uh, kind of gave birth to a very powerful leader of Germany that we will uh, talk about later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just thought it was important. Well, A, I definitely want you to rant and all that because that's what the stream is all about. <laughs> but that definitely sets the pretense for what comes after World War One. Yeah. Which, if you're familiar with the numeric system, is World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but that's because they got hit so hard because of that and because of that, that – funky ruler was able to come into power yeah um and they yeah. shifted towards the development of weapons yeah yeah so uh jam mccarthy 1975 says w so capital w lowercase w one uh arabic mm. numeral one so thank you jam mccarthy 1975 for that insightful very comment. helpful <laughs> but yeah so World War One is interesting. Um, it was really the war between, if you think about it, like new democracies versus old kingdoms. Uh, Russia was, I mean, Russia was in turmoil a bit, but the Tsars were overthrown in what, 1917, right? So for the first half, I'm pretty sure, I mean, they had already been under a bit of strain, the Tsars of Russia. They had to make a democratic Duma uh, and stuff like that, but the they, Duma. The Duma. <laughs> but also Germany. Continue. Uh, yeah. Also Germany had a Kaiser, and Austria Hungary had uh, Kaiser. <laughs> Kaiser Wilhelm. Continue. Yep. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So and then Austria. You know him personally. <laughs> I do actually. Like, hey, Willie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Remember, you were the car, the, the 1910 car, and you still owe me, like, those 30 <laughs> bucks, which is now $300,000. That's you an don't... inconsistent rate of inflation. You've been dead for 50 years? 
Anyways, yeah, yeah, so Austria-Hungary also had an emperor, but then France, France was, I mean, they had revolutioned, you know, a uh, hundred years earlier, so France was a democracy. Uh, England, also a democracy, you know, British Parliament, stuff like that. I mean, they did have a king, but constitutional monarchy, right? Uh, the U.S., which ended up coming in as well, also a democracy, or well, a republic, not a democracy, uh, a democratic republic, yeah. So, it's interesting, because if World War I had gone the other way, you probably would have seen these more traditional uh, forms of rule continue. You would see these monarchies continue to rule and you know, be major world powers. So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, I will go to the first technology. Mad lad. Mad <laughs> lad. This is Hiram Maxim, mm -hmm. a.k.a. my not-yet-confirmed great-great-great-grandfather. Oh, really? So... <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know he felt uh, that look strongly. Look at him. Hey, just look at the eyebrows. <laughs> tell me, tell me that's not my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. He's got the signature raise. Yeah. Like every time I look into a camera, my eyebrow raises. That is Although true. Although that's the wrong one. He's doing it on the wrong one. I mm. do my left. Yeah, and if um. But any anyway. And if 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 he's not uh, biologically your great grandfather, I think you should apply for adoption. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with one of his uh, grandkids, then you can become his great great grandson. Mm. Yeah, he's your grandfather in spirit. In spirit, yeah. So, yeah, the maximum absolute gun. mad light. Okay, so yeah. I just I, let's put this into perspective. Mm -hmm. Like Johan was saying earlier about how that guy came into his fifth grade class and showed everyone his <laughs> ramrod. <laughs> that could only fire. Like once every like fifteen seconds to mm -hmm. a minute, depending how Trash good you are or not you yeah. were. And so right down here, if you look at the bottom of that image, mm. I'll tell you that guy was pretty good says, with the ramrod. Oh yeah, it <laughs> says seven hundred and sixty shots per minute. Now, admittedly, that's an exaggeration. He wrote that as an exaggeration, and because uh -huh. he thought that's what the gun would be capable of, but he for that specific test he didn't have like Ooh. enough shots to like accurately count it. Ooh. Um it realistically it could fire anywhere from four hundred and fifty actually five hundred and fifty to six hundred rounds per minute. Which okay. is that's a that's lot comparable. more than once yeah. per fifteen seconds. Yeah. I think I think or it's okay to embellish a bit like that. You know? Mm. I mean companies do that all the time. Like like, X yeah. hour battery life? Um, not likely. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, so this is the first machine gun, right? You just... Yes. And yeah, the first automatic... This, what, or was it Yeah, this was one of the or? most, if not the most crucial, um, like, ballistic weapon of World War I. Mm -hmm. Because it completely... Like, No Man's Land was created yep. because of these guns. Because yeah. one German lad and one British Tommy would be sitting up there on opposite sides of their field just firing off countless mm -hmm. shots uh, at each other, which is why that No Man's Land was created in between the trenches. Yep. Because if you went over there, you would catch the 550, like – quadruple depending on how many maximum guns were firing yep. shots per minute and you would become a human doormat yeah, yeah so this good. was like a big step up you know like it went from spears and then it went to daggers and swords and then it went to catapult and then it went to cannons and then it went to guns cannons to guns pretty extreme and mm -hmm. then guns to the maxim gun is like slow your roll Hiram. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like just take a seat in that field mm -hmm. away, away from your gun. Let's mm -hmm. calm down. Yeah. But this totally reshaped what World War I would have been a completely different world without yeah. the invention of this. And it was, it, as you can see, it was invented in 1886, or it, it was created in 1884, and mm -hmm. then it was used 
Um, it was first used in combat in 1886, and then obviously in World War One, which was where it was like mainly used. Mm-hmm. Um, it was used all the way up until 1959. Yeah, hmm. which shows that it's pretty solid technology. Yeah, yeah it's interesting, and I like and, how this this guy. Yeah. Uh, he just, he knew exactly what he was doing when he created this, right? Oh, yeah. I bet he feels oh, no remorse for 100%. the deaths that occurred <laughs> afterwards, right? Like, um, Nobel, he, he invented dynamite and, and then people, instead of using it, I don't know what he, he wanted, he thought people would use it for construction or something. I mean, honestly, that's a little short sighted of him, right? Inventing an mm-hmm. explosive and thinking that people aren't going to use it to blow other people up, like that wasn't a very good judgment. But he ended up. Uh, someone thought that he died, so they printed his obituary in the newspaper, and they were like, "This man, absolute trash. He invented dynamite, and it's killed so many people. We're glad he's dead." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm not dead." So then he invented the Nobel Prize because he was like, "I need to put something good. I need something good on my legacy." Instead of something bad. And if I say the name Nobel to the layperson, they probably think of the Nobel Prizes and not dynamite. So in that sense, it worked. So genius plot right there. Yeah. Um, this is a little interesting fact. Yeah. Um, after he, he got the idea to start like making these weapons and specifically the machine gun after a man at a Paris exhibition said... If you want to make a lot of money, invent something that will enable these Europeans to cut each other's throats with greater facility. <laughs> wow. And then he went on to create the Maxim gun. Legendary. And he made out pretty well. He became mm-hmm. a millionaire. He, his wow. net worth was $15 million. Dang. And that's um, like, you know, 1884, $15 million. Yeah. So, hmm. rolling in dough. Yeah. That man was... And it's, I, I like, I like that we, that I found that quote because that is another reason that these weapons are produced because, you know, like you said earlier, if you don't produce them, somebody else mm. will, yeah. you know? Yep. So he was like, Hiram was like, I'm going to do that myself. <laughs> yeah. Fine. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well um i guess i don't know that's probably what the logic <laughs> was if if i'm not gonna do it someone else is gonna do it so i might as well just make money off of it but yeah it's interesting yeah the morality any thoughts there. on the maxim gun johan that's pretty badass <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's pretty good yeah cool it's all good or um side. yeah cool Okay. Yeah. On to planes. Planes. Yeah, invented in 1903 so, yeah, and then cool. used in war in 1914. That's an 11-year turnaround. Like, that's crazy. Like, if you think about that. Because um, in 1903, when they first invented the plane, uh, the Wright brothers, I mean, it got got across, like, what? It went across a field for maybe, like, a minute and then ran out of fuel and, like, they landed again. Yeah. Which... Yeah. Is pretty crazy. And then in 1914, they had it fully ready to go to enemy countries and bomb them. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the quote from earlier. Yeah. You know, you know, know what's crazy about planes? Because it actually supports that quote from you earlier. Hmm. Is that we had them in World War One before the first commercial flight was actually done to like transport people. Mm -hmm. We used them in World War One before we even did that. Hmm. Yeah, mm. that makes sense. Huh. Crazy. That interesting, though. So, yeah, planes in World War I, um, in the beginning, they were mostly just used for surveillance. And, mm-hmm. and then people were like, mm-hmm. what if I strapped a gun to it? <laughs> and you saw that nearing the end of the war, and mm-hmm. two planes with guns on it was like, Orange is the new black. Like, mm. planes with guns on it is the new black. And yeah. everyone, all all forces had that. Yeah. You know? Guns on a plane. Guns on a plane. New hit movie. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of all these 
God darn. Mother loving buns. <laughs> He's mother loving play. Yeah. Yeah, oh, hilarious. So, but, yeah, no, I like, yeah. I mean, like, come on. They were invent. it took up until 1903 for it to be invented. Mm-hmm. It took until 1914 for them to be like, what if I killed people? <laughs> yep. That is, that. that's the trend, so, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But yeah. But these, I mean, you have, well, we're going to get into it more, but we, yeah. you already have water combat, right? Mm. Which is ships. And those were the cannons on the ships. Mm. So that when you see your neighbor Pat on a ship across mm. from you, you can be like, hey, Pat. And mm. you can turn your cannon in their general vicinity. Right, mm. you obviously already have land combat because that's what we all stand on, mm-hmm. and this was just mastering the air combat. Mm. And next up, we have fire combat yes. to round out the four <laughs> elements. I I didn't you even did. have that planned when I started wow, that. Wow, that's sentence. right. <laughs> this is the best. The flamethrower. Uh, it was the flammenwerfer. Yep, started in Germany, the flammenwerfer. So that's that's fun. Um, it's interesting. The Germans started using flamethrowers in World War One, and then when the Americans got involved, they were using rifles, and then Germany was like, stop using rifles! It, it's, it's not fair. And then we're like, you're, you're using flammenwerfers, so get, get out of here, Germany. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's just odd. Right? Didn't they, I forget why the reasoning was, but didn't they, like, object to the Americans using rifles for some reason? Um, using shotguns or shotguns that's what it was they were like no shotguns in trenches yeah the americans were like "Ah." i'll do what i want (laughs) but yeah because the germans like couldn't compete with it Mm. you know so they were like you know what it is time to bring this i don't even know what expression to use it's Mm. time to light this place up and then just use the flamethrower Yep. But, yeah, as you can see, it, it needed, like, two people to operate it in yeah. the beginning. And then, like, around World War II, people were like, this is kind of trash. I don't mm. want Klaus to be standing behind me for the duration of this hundred years long war. Mm. I just, I want to hold the thing myself. Mm. And so they did. Nice. I actually... I didn't even read this entire slide when we were going over it, mm-hmm. but it has a range of 60. Wow. Like, that is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Especially in a, in a confined trench. Mm-hmm. Like, like, that if, is if, devastating. Yeah, yeah, if Klaus jumps into your trench and mm. just presses the button, yeah. like, you're, you're braised beef, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Elon Musk is selling them online. Oh yeah, <laughs> or he was at least for a time the not a th- not a flamethrower because I forget one of the shipping companies was like we will not ship flamethrowers I apologize but we will not ship flamethrowers and then Elon Musk was like oh it's it's a it's a not a flamethrower Elon Musk is such a legend wasn't it like if we can get it was like if we can hit some goal he said we will start selling flamethrowers. Uh, which is interesting because usually uh, YouTubers, they'll say, if we can hit 13,000 likes, uh, then we'll do this in a video. Or if we can hit uh, a million subscribers, then we can do this, right? Um, yeah. And uh, if you like and subscribe, you can be entered into a free gift card giveaway. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, but <laughs> here, uh, Elon Musk has... Again, he is legendary. I just saw this uh, video by CGP Grey, who I've mentioned on here before, I think, uh, where he went on a road trip in a Tesla, in like a decked out Tesla, you know? And it was just so cool. I was like, dude, that's crazy. I want a Tesla. Uh, I mean, they're crazy expensive. My parents might have bought a Tesla today. I actually don't know. Really? I haven't talked to them yet. Really? But they went out to buy a car. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they asked they asked me like Johan like what kind of because we need a new car and mm-hmm. they asked like what kind of car do you want I was like we should get a Tesla mm. and so they said that that was high on their list for oh consideration God. that they were going out to look at them today. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So I am crossing my fingers that they yeah. might have pulled the trigger. 
Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. I, Hopefully I, I, not the trigger on the flamin. <laughs> I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah, not the flamin burper. Um, yeah, I love those uh, Delorean doors, the Falcon Wing doors. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's like if they were to do a Back to the Future reboot, they would probably do it in a Tesla. That would that right? would probably be the way to go. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so cool. Anyways, yeah, flamin burper. So flamethrowers, mm -hmm. you like fire? I like fire. Mm. You know who doesn't like fire? The Pat. others. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> not Pat. This man has been tormented. I, I don't even know his face. Yeah. At least with the quantum mechanic, uh, we know, okay, this is the guy. This is him. But Pat, he's faceless. He's just a name. I just... <laughs> After this stream, he'll be faceless. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I really Anyways, hope there is no one actually named. Is, and let's go over to okay. mustard gas. I really hope that there is no one actually named Pat that vaguely no, lives near no. you. No, <laughs> there. No, my neighbor isn't even actually named Pat. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's good. You got to cover because even if I, 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 yeah, I live across from a couple. Uh huh. Because even yeah, even if it's not like the people right next to you, someone like a few streets down named Pat might be like. <sighs> And rightfully so. They would be horrified. Oh, we've got some Yui Films has commented. They say, oh, no. the only thing hotter than a flamethrower is Johan. And then... <laughs> uh, I couldn't then agree heart. more. Yeah. Also, he used the wrong then. He did T-H-E-N instead of T-H-A-N. Yeah, it should be T-H-A-N. So, yeah. Explain that, Yui Films. Uh, why? Yeah. Anyway, so mustard gas. Mustard, mustard gas. gas or yes. C4, H8, CO2S, which makes yeah. it plural. <laughs> it was used in combat. <laughs> yep. It was um, used uh, for combat in 1915. The first mm -hmm. ever attack was on a group of Canadian soldiers. I don't know what Oof. they did to piss them yeah. off. Yeah, Canadians. Oh, rip rip so to those sad. Canadians. Yeah. They don't deserve and, that. But it was first synthesized in 18... Pondered about since, like, 1830. Oh, really? But it was first ever synthesized the in 1860. Yeah. And basically, the Germans were the main employer mm -hmm. of the mustard gas. And it was, like... for Because the troops, especially the first Canadians that were hit by... They had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. Chemical. This is this is the birth of chemical warfare. By the yeah. way, with mustard gas and chlorine gas. Mm -hmm. um, and then what? Tear they, gas they, they too, probably. Were. As a less Sorry, potent tear gas. Did tear gas yeah. evolve from this as a less potent version to be used on uh, rebellious I, citizens? I can find out. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Yui Films. I didn't care about then then. I didn't come here for workplace harassment. Well, I apologize, Yui Films, but unfortunately, you spelled don't, D-I-N-T, without an apostrophe. Yes. <laughs> if you tune into my channel, I'll the alphabet in under 128 seconds <laughs> just yeah, for Yui Films. <laughs> explain the alphabet in under 100. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, tear gas. Yep. Um... Sometimes known as mace is a chemical weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I need history. Yep. Use. Warfare. Well, isn't isn't mustard gas, can't you like accidentally make it if you mix, I, I think it's like two just like Sh Should items. we tell them? I don't think I know Because I know how you make it. I, I, I'm pretty sure Johan knows how you make it. I'm pretty sure I know one of the elements used. I mean, our, our audience could probably just pull it. Uh, so, I'm yeah, not it's sure. Bleach and films it's, is bleach here. And, it's bleach and ammonia. Well, too That's late. That's how you make it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the thing people don't talk about is emotional warfare. That's what Yui Films says. I apologize, Yui Films. <laughs> emotional warfare. We are going to talk about psychological warfare, so. Yes, we are. Get ready for that. So. The yeah, tear gas was not directly from uh, mustard gas or chlorine gas. Oh, okay. The U.S. 
chemical warfare service developed them for use in riot control. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So um, mustard gas. So yeah, the the guys that were first hit by this had no idea mm-hmm. what to expect. Yeah, it just and completely destroyed like, their lungs, right? It causes scarring yeah. on the soft tissue or something like that. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, hold on, let me look up the symptoms real quick. Yeah, okay. But and it I was like god awful. Yeah, it was reactive with the skin too, but especially bad just like throughout the uh, respiratory system. So really like crazy attack. Um, yeah. So it, it burns your, it burns and irritates your eyes. It can even yep. blind you. Mm-hmm. It blisters your skin. Mm. It, um, for your ref, for your respiratory system, it like makes you sneeze. It gives you a hoarse throat. You have shortness of breath. You cough, you have sinus pain. Mm. And then, you get abdominal pain, diarrhea, fever, nausea, and vomiting. Mm. And it is, yeah. So it's mustard gas. Believe it or not, is not in and of itself fatal. Mm-hmm. Like mustard gas is a disabling and debilitating gas. Uh-huh. But unless you breathe it for like, like hours straight. Yeah. It won't actually kill you, huh. but in warfare, if your entire unit gets disabled yeah. by this, the the other opposition can just walk right over it and then just take you out. Yeah, well, it's interesting. After the first attack, I think they looked at the dead soldiers, and they looked at the buttons on their uniforms, and they had actually corroded. Like, they were metal, and they had oh. turned all, like, green and like a penny from 1957 or something. Like, they were all gross uh, because I think the chlorine probably is what did it, corroded the... um, Like, it reacted with the metal, which is interesting. Just so reactive. And as you can imagine, they really wanted to to develop uh, gas masks quickly after this. So after the first hit of this, they were like, we got to get on that. (laughs) We got to invent gas masks so that we don't get like (laughs) destroyed by this um but another interesting thing i'm not sure if this was mustard gas i think this was actually chlorine gas um is that sometimes if the winds changed it would just blow Uh, back on you (laughs) well that's the that's the issue with all chemical warfare Mm -hmm. is that if the if the wind changes or one of your opponents is an airbender your entire (laughs) opposition or your entire like battalion is gone that actually happened yeah no it did i think to the british i think is who it happened to um Um, here wind it's funny yui films says oh no sneezing (laughs) you better hope pat doesn't have a gas mask oh no yeah what if pat no i better hope pat doesn't have a big ass fan (laughs) yeah he can't blow or he can't blow all the um Gas right back. I at think me. he's gearing up. I think Pat is developing an arsenal to defend against you. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in battles where chlorine gas was first used, mm-hmm. the wind blew the gas the wrong way, rough, or the gas dissipated prematurely. Oof. So yeah, no, it, it was the Germans were again the main employers of chemical warfare. Mm-hmm. So they kind of got screwed if the um. If old, I forget the Greek god of wind, Aeolus. Aeolus, yeah. It's not Aeolus, is it? Uh, Aeolus, yeah. Yeah, Aeolus. If old Aeolus decided to rear his head the other direction, mm. but god of wind. I love Aeolus's portrayal in the movie version of the Odyssey that they showed us after we read the book last year in English. He was hilarious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, and then Hermes. Or whatever. <laughs> Nobody says yeah. no to a goddess. Oh, that was such a good movie. <laughs> and the actor for Odysseus looked like Liam Neeson, like vaguely, although he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I remember. It was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, why is Qui Gon Jinn going on, <laughs> going on an Odyssey here? Uh, oh, and then remember the flute guy that uh, got killed by the cycle. <laughs> oh yeah, he was so scared he kept he, playing. He would the not flute. stop playing the flute. <laughs> Uh, his this life man was, was in addicted danger. to flute. Up to his sad end, 
he did not stop playing the flute. And that is true courage there. So. But anyways. Yeah. The yeah. submarine. Ah. Uh, it's the exactly U-boat. exactly what it sounds like. Yep. Submarine. Sub ocean. Underneath the ocean. Which is also the Undersea original boat. name U-boat. Like underwater boat. I don't think the submarine has gotten very creative names. It has submarine and U-boat. Oh, we have a, we have a lot of chat described. if we, if we want to address it. Oh, we've got more. Okay. Oh, no. Sneezing. Uh, oh. Pat. <laughs> Pat Broadster. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, bro. <gasps> what? What the hell? Ever heard of Yui Films? No. Worst weapon. Oh. Why are they threatening me? For the record, <laughs> I have not made any threats, Pat. Whoa. It has only ain't. been my colleague here that has made threats. Threats. I, uh, I, if you sift through the video, you you will notice that somebody I somebody made that just for this video, probably. And I'm gonna find out who that is, and I'm going to do everything I said. I was. Pat. Oh no, no, they have three subscribers, and they no have way. they have videos posted up to like three no, months ago. No, that's someone. That's someone totally mad. <laughs> wait, wait, they just have co- <laughs> They just have commercials, wait, that's true Wait 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 <laughs> No <laughs> What? It's a real person <laughs> <laughs> What do you have to say to Pat, Sebastian? Listen progressive lady <laughs> pat is a common name mm-hmm. you probably pat should be both male and pat can be female okay i don't know which one you are mm-hmm. you you your image is the it's flow progressive, from progressive. Lady. yeah flow mm-hmm. from progressive <laughs> you probably should have um, gone with an uncommon name this is this is when the bit blows up in your face, <laughs> like, gentlemen. Uh huh. That is fascinating. I I would like to. You know ask- what, Pat? I'm gonna subscribe. I'm gonna subscribe to you. I just subscribed to you, literally just because of this. I would like so to. So ask- I hope I hope we're even. If you want to um go subscribe to me, hmm. that'd be great. Yeah, I would like to ask um, Pat if they are a regular to the Gravity Max live stream or if someone has tipped them off to this episode. Uh, and that's why they're here. So I we eagerly await your response. That's hysterical. So but no, my neighbor is A, not actually named that, but B, it is a bit Pat. It's just a standard name. You see, I'm an author, hmm. you know. And us, us author. I'm not an author because I'm not published. I'm a yeah, writer. You're an unpublished author. I'm, I'm a writer. All right, he's a writer. And we have to use a lot of names. Yeah. Pat could have been Steve. Mm. Pat could have been Shirley. Mm. Pat could have been Leslie. Pat could have been Leanne. Mm. Pat could have been any of that, and it just happened to be Pat. But you know what, Pat? I feel like I chose Pat for a destiny. For I because of destiny. Mm. It was fated. Oh. I think that we were supposed to meet here on this live. That is so weird. Uh, that we were supposed to meet here on this live stream. Yeah, that is interesting. So that I could work out my resentful feelings about my name. I don't even hate <laughs> Like I live across from this lovely elderly couple. Hmm. The other person I kind of like, I'm in the middle, you know, so there's yeah. like a house slightly offset to the left, a house slightly offset to the right. Mm-hmm. Lovely elderly couple on my left. I don't really associate with the people on the right. Mm-hmm. But listen, Pat, if you were, if you lived in my neighborhood, I would definitely come over to your house and we would share some drinks and we would share some nuggies. 
<laughs> he, he's on the one on the right, he says. He says I'm the one on the right. What? No, no you're not. Because I do know <laughs> the names of the right. But you know what? Thank you, Pat. Yeah, JK. Oh scared my me. gosh. Um, thank you, Pat, for Lol. watching this. Lol. Indeed, yeah. that was funny, Pat. Mm. Thanks, Pat. Oh my gosh. I want to you know, know whose friend of Brendan's is named Pat. I can't believe that was a coincidence. I really want to know. Right? Do you think that was a coincidence? I think, I think, uh, Yui probably yeah. tipped Pat off. Yep. That, would be my guess. But even if that didn't happen, even yep. if fate brought Pat here, mm -hmm. I want to say, I want to take this moment to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. to Yui. Thank you to whatever fate brought Pat here. Mm -hmm. Most of all, thank you to Pat. Mm. Thank you for being able to go against the gradient to be able to strike down uh, just slander and libel that you thought was wrong. What is he saying? I'm going to go back to feeding the pigeons and preparing my <laughs> gas mask for the inevitable chemical attack from Sebastian. Nice. I will today, after this stream, I give you my promise. I will dispose of all of my chemical weapons. <laughs> Yep. That's what For I legal answer. reasons, I do not have any chemical weapons. <laughs> <laughs> that is <Yep>. a joke. <laughs> but thank you, Pat. Mm. If you did choose to subscribe, thank you. If you didn't, I also say thank you. Because <laughs> that is your honest and valued choice. You did subscribe. Mm. Thank you so much, Pat. How much do you want to bet to me. Um, that Yui just typed in Pat? into the YouTube search bar, and then went to Filter's channel, found the first one, and said, hey, can you, can you, can you uh, come on this live stream? Uh, we've got some funny situations going on here. So, but anyways. you know what, Pat? You're all right in my book. Mm. Thank you for being here. Thank mm. you for subscribing. Thank yeah. you for being <clears throat> a friend. You. Thank you for being Pat. Yes, thank you, Pat. You spent a lot of time talking about Pat. Well, it was quite a notable event, I would say. Anyways, so, the submarine. What the hell were we talking about? We were talking about submarines. <laughs> so Submarines, yeah. right. So, again, we have... Fire, air, <laughs> regular land, and now we have whoosh, water. Yeah. Or more importantly, under the water. Mm. Kind of like <clears throat> undersea. Yeah. And if you punch undersea yourself in the jaw, it sounds like undersea. <laughs> which okay. is the German yeah. word for undersea, underwater, which is why it's called a U-boat. Yeah. Waka waka what? <laughs> but U-boats were used in mostly in World War II, though. Not um, in the First listen, World War. I just let out a lot of anger because of the whole <laughs> situation. <laughs> but my anger is not some finite substance that I just lackadaisically throw around. <laughs> my rage is infinite. My rage is absolute. I will light your house <laughs> on fire. That um, doesn't sound very cash money of you. <laughs> but great. Let's, let's will, go back to talking about like fire. So the precursor to submarines were <laughs> <laughs> items known as diving bells, right? And so you would basically take a bell shape, take out the ringer, make it very big, and then you and the boys could sit inside of the bell while they lowered it into the ocean. And what would happen is that a bubble of air would form inside that bell because underwater, air can only go up to escape and rise to the surface. 
So as long as there's no holes in the top, as long as the only hole is in the bottom, then the air will not escape, which, you know, that's pretty good. And it means that as you go down and the pressure increases, the water level will rise because you have a finite amount of air. And if that uh, pressure rises, we all know Boyle's law, right? Uh, P1 times Oh, yeah. If, equals... if water gets hot, it yep. boils. No. Uh, no, no, no. It's pressure and volume, the relation of pressure and volume in a gas. Uh, it's also I, – I, w- I want to take the time. To yeah. address the audience, no, I'm not drunk. A. Okay. <laughs> I got. I've been up since 3 a.m. Hmm. I am so sleep deprived. And I'm so tired, and I have to wake up at six in the morning tomorrow. Uh huh. Oh, that's I'm hearing rough. things. Six a.m. Getting up <laughs> for school Mondays. Gorefield. I am uh, anyways, go back cats. to what you were saying. Oh, okay. Um, was it? Pat Broadster I was says, I liked it. me and the boys vibing in the diving bell. And that's exactly how I imagine it would be. <laughs> Lasagna cat hate Lasagna Monday. Lasagna cat hate Monday. <laughs> Lasagna uh, cat. This is great. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, submarines, they were most importantly used for the sinking of ships Mm -hmm. britain was known for having the largest navy out of any of the global superpowers at the time of Mm -hmm. either world actually yeah and that's why submarines were so detrimental to it yeah um going into world war ii Mm -hmm. uh i'm not saying change the slide but there was a very prolific American ship that – I'm forgetting the names here. But there was a very prolific um, American ship that got yeah, shot sure. down, torpedoed down by an like... intersea boat mm. and there was a British one. Yeah, it was – I forget. It was a passenger remember. ship going to Britain and then yeah. Germany's like, hey, unrestricted U-boat warfare. And the U.S. is like yeah. – Please don't. Uh, and <laughs> Germany is like, I'm going to do it anyway. And we're like, oh my god, not, not again. <laughs> so that's literally the conversation I have with Cat when mm, she knocks like everything uh, off yeah. of the kitchen table. I wonder what psychologically makes cats do that. They're bastards. That is a valid hypothesis. <laughs> Anyways. <so laughs> So, so that's submarines. Um, it's interesting. You had these submarines, since they were not open like the diving bells, they had to be pressurized. So they had to be able to withstand the pressure underwater, even though they're only at 1 ATM, <clears throat> presumably, to or 101.3 kilopascals to keep everyone fine and dandy because people... Can't really handle much more or much less. Uh, actually, if you get too much more, then the partial pressure of oxygen increases to a deadly amount, and you suffer something known as oxygen toxicity. Mm. So if you don't want to suffer from oxygen toxicity, then you need to keep your untersee vessel um, at 101.3 kilopascals as you go down. The problem is, every 33 feet you go down, uh, another... Uh, 101.3 kilopascals of pressure are mounted on top of you. So you go 33 feet underwater and the pressure is doubled. So you only have mm. 101.3 kilopas- kilopascals of pressure inside, but outside there's 202.6 kilopascals of pressure. And, you know, high pressure tends to move to low pressure, as any weatherman would know. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so, um... If you are in a vehicle that has less pressure than the ambient environment, then, you know, you're going to get crushed. So they had to be able to withstand that pressure. Yeah. And, I mean, they've come really far today. I mean, they built one. Didn't someone go down to the Mariana Trench or something like that? Yeah, uh, Yeah, I remember something. Yeah, which is crazy. That's a lot of pressure. Lots of pressure. Water is heavy. It's really surprising. The pressure down here is immense. Mm. Wanna try drugs? <laughs> oh, I remember that meme. Oh. What would you call that? Low tier, mid tier meme? 
Um, yeah, I have, going by magnitude, mm-hmm. mid tier because yeah. I remember that, that had a definite peak. It did. The pressure under here is comedy nice. wise, low tier. Yeah, yeah, it's not that funny. I agree with that. So, but anyways, let's go yeah. off. Speaking of not that funny. Mm. World War II. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very, very not that funny. Uh, I think that's the best transition. That is. That in is... Gravity Max history. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so World War II stemmed from World War One. So, you know, that's... A fascinating effect. It really, uh, as you said, Johan, it was the Treaty of Versailles, which was really harsh on Germany. Um, Germany was none too pleased with that, and they were like, nine, we're not gonna, we're not gonna accept this they were, treaty. They were like, we're, we're not gonna follow this. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll do it for a couple years to make them happy, and then they, we'll did, they didn't them. read the terms of service. <laughs> they didn't. Yeah. They what, didn't do you, read what do you mean terms. I can't cancel my subscription? They violated the warranty. Yeah. The war <laughs> void. Um, yeah, so you started with the Weimar Republic, um, and that wasn't doing so well. The Great Depression hit it pretty bad, and they had such inflation that people would use the bills to wallpaper their houses. Uh, so then the Weimar Republic was eventually overthrown by the new political party, and I kind of don't want to get demonetized. Uh, I think even just saying it, you kind of get in trouble here on YouTube, yeah. Uh, even though we're talking about history. So the, a new party came into power, and they were pretty militaristic and hateful, mm. and they were fascists, and then they just stopped. Most people did not see it coming. Yeah, most people did not <laughs> see it coming. And they, they ended up violating the Treaty of Versailles, and they started to build up their military presence again. They stopped paying uh, reparations to France. And it was interesting. The other countries, Britain and France, they reacted to it by not really doing much, which is interesting because they really didn't want to get drawn into another conflict again. So they were like, please, please stop doing that. Please just stop. But they weren't going to... They didn't want to, like, um, like they were building new military, like, ships. They were building up their military in secret, but the secret wasn't kept very well. France and Britain knew, but they were like, we really don't want to have to acknowledge it, because if we do, then we're going to have to, like, go to war again, and that wasn't fun, so you kind of just let it happen. Um, And then they let them invade uh, the Rhineland, right? Uh, yeah. And then they were like, oh, I don't know about that. Uh, and then they invaded Poland along with Russia. And they were like, okay, that's it. We gotta, like, we gotta step in here now. We just, we cannot handle this anymore. It's go time. It is. Yeah, they're like, this, this is too much, man. We were, we were willing to work with you. Uh, you know, give an inch, they'll walk a mile. Uh, and so, so the situation quickly got out of hand. And another world war started. So mm. that is the scene in fair Europe where we lay our scene. Uh, so now let's talk about technologies. Should I go to the first slide? Yes. Okay. So the gas chamber. So this is where – this is probably the outstander mm-hmm. – the outstander, the, um, the outlier – Mm. of a lot of these technologies because it's not like a projectile weapon or it's Mm -hmm. not an explosion um but it is used on political prisoners or prisoners of war the first gas Mm -hmm. chamber was actually created in the u.s Mm -hmm. um to execute this guy um because he got the death penalty and Mm -hmm. for some reason they were like let's use gas right Mm. But obviously, most infamously, this was used during the final solution Mm -hmm. of Germany, where a lot of the political dissidents were uh, executed Mm -hmm. through the use of these. 
Yeah. And yeah, obviously the, everyone knows about the death camps and yeah, yeah go ahead. The, it was interesting. They were facing a problem, which was that uh, the soldiers had to execute so many people that they began to get PTSD. So they're like, okay, we need a better way of doing this, which is an interesting thing to think. Instead of saying, hey, our soldiers are getting PTSD. Maybe this isn't the most moral thing to be doing. Nope. They think, okay, they're just, they're just weak. We got to like invent a better way, which, you know. It's, it's truly horrifying that their mentality was, yeah. well, I guess now we need a more efficient way yeah, to kill exactly. people. Exactly. Like, that that's yeah. actually what what they thought instead of going, like, this is really terrorizing our mm-hmm. own soldiers. They were like, well, why don't we just make it easier? One click of a button and that's it. Like, yeah, that's yeah. pretty incredible that, like, that's where their minds went to. Mm-hmm. But that's exactly what they did. The yeah. cr- With the use of the most notable gas is, you've probably heard of this, was Zyklon B. Mm-hmm which is a toxic chemical gas, which was heavily used by the Germans during the final solution. Mm-hmm. Final, yeah, the final solution. Um, I'm just looking at the history of it right now. Yeah, it was interesting. The There was another chemical known as Zyklon A, invented by the same guy, and it was a fertilizer that actually Europe... Before this, it was facing a crisis. Europe was facing a crisis of arable land. They were running out of land to farm with. So this guy, he invents this chemical, calls it Zyklon A, right? And it is used to make the land arable again. And they gave him a Nobel Prize for it because they said that he saved a billion lives in Europe because they would have died of famine. Um, And then he invented this and killed a ton of people. And so then the Nobel committee was like, what do we do? Should we like revoke his prize? But like, can we do that? So it was an interesting situation when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, I'm just looking at the formulas Mm. behind it. Yeah. So at its base, it's a hydrogen cyanide. Mm. And... Um, there's obviously slight variations Mm -hmm. when made into Zyklon B, Mm -hmm. but Zyklon B was responsible for the deaths of 1.1, roughly 1.1 million people Mm. during the, um, like during the final solution, during the Mm -hmm. Holocaust and all that. Yeah. And... This, again, shows that the Germans heavily used chemical warfare. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, like Johan said, their main focus was, like, efficient. Mm. And Zyklon B was actually very easily produced. Like, of course, hydrogen is the most abundant uh, element in the universe. Mm -hmm. And I guess they just had a lot of cyanide. And I don't know the guys. But this is obviously an outstander. I, yeah. I said outstander again, yeah. an outlier. Yeah. An outlier from all the other technologies. Yeah, because it was used on their own people instead of on exactly. the enemies. So that yeah. was shocking. Um, and it wasn't, direct, it wasn't directly used because the political party obviously had an agenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you have any final thoughts? Um, yeah, well, this we're going to get into this a bit more later, but uh, as we see scientists that are involved in uh, the creation of some of these technologies, you have to ask, where, like, how culpable are they? What's their responsibility? Uh, in some situations, right, you can imagine that the scientists were kept in the dark about the uses of what they were inventing. In other situations, they don't really have that plausible deniability. In other situations, it's clear that they did not know. But in those situations even, it's still a question of if they were to resist, they would have been killed as well. So it's interesting. There are a lot of scientists, a lot of German scientists from the 1900s that ended up working with um, 
with the German government because they pretty much had to, uh, because that was yeah. the state of the country, and they could have been killed otherwise. And so then some of them ended up coming to America uh, under something called Operation Paperclip, where they extracted a ton of German scientists from Germany so that the U.S. could get the knowledge instead of Russia. But, yeah, so it was interesting because these people, they have interesting mixed legacies. Like, I think Heisenberg uh, worked on a German nuclear project, right? I think Heisenberg and was aiding them in building uh, nuclear power plants and then nuclear weapons too, right? Uh, and then, but he's, you know, he's the Heisenberg yeah. uncertainty principle as well, so. Oh, I explained that. Yeah, he Check did. that out. Sebastian's channel. Go check out that video. So, yeah, all, it's. Fifth link of the description. Situation. Yeah, scientists, you like to think of them as, like, great in inventors, but. Sometimes they were involved with, you know, evil regimes that were using their yeah. science for bad purposes. And so it's, you know, generally a bad situation all around. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll move on to the next slide. Tanks. So tanks were actually invented in World War I, but they were really bad at existing <laughs> trash <laughs> they were really popularized in the second world yeah. war <laughs> yeah anyways so, yeah tanks yeah. you know what tanks are mm -hmm. you've seen them yeah you've, absolutely. i know you fantasize about writing <laughs> not even firing the gun just str like just strolling around mm. in your tank you i know, think you can do that in russia i-95 Doing Every all night. That. Actually, I, I think there are some. That guy. They're actually there. You can get a street legal tank. You have to remove all the artillery and you have to replace the metal treads with leather or like tire rubber so that it can drive on a road. But you can actually get a tank. <clears throat> oh, and a plane's passing overhead right now. When you get a loud plane like that pass overhead, do you ever think, oh, this is it. Here comes yeah, uh, the nuclear yeah, actually, fire. Yeah, I'm glad that you, uh, while I was walking here, like yeah. I got back home at 4.30, right, mm -hmm. before the stream went up. Mm -hmm. And well, as I was walking back, I, I see this plane, and it is like – I know how planes turn. I yeah. know how aviation works this guy was kind of off kilter you know uh -oh. like he wasn't tilted in the way you would expect a plane to be tilted uh -huh. he was like he was not lined up correctly oh no and he was flying so low to the ground like oh my god and i was like hmm. <laughs> hmm there's no airport nearby uh oh <laughs> and so i i just picked up the pace a little bit yeah yeah interesting situation i mean nine times out of ten is probably a passenger jet but then you're like oh oh but um, it's it's, mm. it's kind of shocking that like we live in a world today where like seeing a plane in the sky like can actually strike fear mm. we us. live in a society <laughs> we live in a society yeah we live in a society. but like it's you know as we talked about earlier everything can get turned into a weapon mm. So yes. it's really crazy, you know, how we've, we've come so far and now it seems that, you know, anything at any point could be, you know, the next yeah. big item used in warfare. Yeah. Yeah. But tanks yeah. were especially useful in World War II because mm -hmm. a lot of the um, – a lot of forces were using World War I tactics – which were completely crushed by tanks because yeah. like trenches and like no man's land tanks could just walk right over there and just roll straight up yeah. and basically decimate anyone that was in the trenches mm -hmm. and tanks are obviously still used today. They mm. were pretty infallible technologies yeah. that have stood the test of time and are really now employed by like every country or like every country with a significant military. Yeah. 
I mean, they really combine everything that you want. Like if you look at the earlier, the cannons, I mean, the main yep. uh, on the front, you know, the recognizable, like that's kind of like a cannon. I mean, it's probably not yep. exactly a cannon, but it's a big, a big like the, gun. Yeah. They've got like the Maxim guns up yeah. the top, you know, the mounted yep. machine yep. guns. So this is really like crazy and it's made of like really strong metal so that it's hard to uh like hit it and like puncture it so it's it was really like revolutionary uh in, in world war one when they made their debut of course they were not so good they can move at like four miles an hour and they would often like sink in the bogs and just they would not do very well but uh they have been innovated upon, and so they are a lot more effective. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, tanks. Um, tanks were actually, like, first conceived by, like, Leonardo da Vinci, if I'm getting that <laughs> right. He was like, oh my gosh. what if we armored a bicycle? Oh, <laughs> or, like, my whatever. Gosh. And his wife was like, oh. Just, just shut up. Not just, go to, just go to bed. He's like, <laughs> what if the bicycle had a cannon on it? Yeah, I <laughs> so think Leonardo I, da Vinci done. was Goodbye. the original r slash shower thoughts. <laughs> Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci, he would have he been a legend on r slash shower thoughts. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so... You'd be like, yo, what if humans had wings? Mm. Yeah, my that dog was one is freaking his... out downstairs. Uh, I'm gonna mute myself while he spazzes. Is it, is, it is it your neighbor? Is it your neighbor? Is that why your dog's freaking out? Uh oh, you guys still there? Oh, do we have a problem? Uh, I'm still oh, here. Okay. We do not. Doesn't seem like we have a problem. Oh, I think Sebastian left. Like yeah, momentary. Sebastian just wanted to okay. uh, make Get sure that food. Pat wasn't stealing yeah. his dog. I see, I see. Pat uh, stole my dog. Well, <laughs> no, I'm joking. It was I said it was, it's my. That's oh, here. Okay. My dog is okay. fast now. Okay. Anyways, so I, just mute, I muted myself. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, should we move on from tanks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on from tanks. So we've got ballistic missiles, and this really angry missiles. Yeah, the absolutely ballistic. Uh, you know, you know when. Yeah, that's that was one of my. That's still one of my. Favorite. Yeah, such a great word. He went. He ballistic. went ballistic. <laughs> uh, my teacher, he went ballistic when. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, when I turned in my essay late, they went ballistic. Yeah. Um. So this particular ballistic missile is the V2 rocket, and this was invented by a guy named Werner Von Braun, right? And he's a very... Sounds Irish. Mm. <laughs> I made that joke off stream. Yeah. Well, first time for the audience. Uh, yeah, so Werner Von Braun is a controversial historical figure. He's an interesting person. Um, so, obviously, yes, he was German, and so the V2 rockets that he invented uh, were used to bomb uh, London. And so, you know, a lot of people died like that. Also, they were constructed using slave labor from the work camps. And it's highly suggested that he probably knew that this was going on. He probably knew that, like, people were dying in the construction of this uh, rocket. And you see, the question is, right, uh, even if he did care that that was going on, uh, it's not like he's going to go against the government in this time period, but at the same time, obviously, you know, controversial. But so he was extracted uh, from Germany in Operation Paperclip, and his rocketry uh, that was used for, uh, you know, warfare ended up being used in the American rocket program and he built the Saturn V rocket which got us to the moon so it's a mixed bag for the biography of Werner von Braun uh, he got us to the moon um, he was in 1955 
he did this special with uh, Walt Disney when Walt was still alive. Um, he actually like they, he went on this sh on his show, and there, there's this pretty cool little like episode where he is, like designs this space station. It's from 1955, uh, and he it's like it's really cool. It's a ringed space station. It's a it rotates to simulate spin gravity, and he said uh, in 1955 that what they would do is they would launch the pieces of this space station, assemble it in space, and then they would use it as a refueling station for the first trip to the moon. Which, you know, I mean, that didn't happen. We just kind of went there and came back. But it's so interesting, you know. I really like that vision. Um, but yeah, so ballistic missiles, you pretty much, you just, it's a use of rocketry. You use the chemical ignition and you fire the rocket into the air. Uh, have it go on its trajectory, and then you just let gravity do the rest, and it carries uh, whatever payload you want to carry to the desired target. And in this case, in World War II, it was uh, Germany launching rockets at Britain to blow things up and kill people, as war does. Um, yeah. So, as war is. As war but, is. Yep. This is... Again, as as it goes on, war just gets like scarier and scarier yeah. because the number of casualties always just increase with each mm -hmm. of these things. Yeah, like you know, like the um, like World War One was like a horrific war mm -hmm. in many ways because no one expected the innovations that came from it. No one was prepared for that, and it like shocked the world. Mm -hmm. And then, like, World War II obviously had little subparts like the, the Holocaust, like, not yeah. to write it off. But yeah. as, as like, an addition to that, it had all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the weapons that were produced literally engineered and manufactured to kill more people. Yeah. And if you look through time, that was never really what war was about mm -hmm. back then and i'm talking like back then uh, i mean yes yeah. like in the good old days nights. when i yeah, was and, when i was meandering around in the 1860s a spry old chap yeah or like <laughs> even before that even like night yeah. and that stuff like vikings mm -hmm. when we all would already have like 12 children yeah. and i would be <laughs> a decorated war veteran <laughs> Right yep. with my thirteen wives. Yeah, but the <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that war back then it was fought only between soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back; it's like the knights. Yeah, knights would siege castle, but they wouldn't really. Well, like after they took the castle, they would do some suspicious things <laughs> to mm -hmm. the citizens. Yeah, actually, but the citizens <laughs> have historically. Uh, have you ever heard of besiegement? Uh, in the past, uh, when a city was under attack, it was under attack. Like, they would just completely destroy a city, yeah. uh, kill all the people there, or enslave them. Um, so that's kind of gone away, but yeah, civilians are not. But the thing is that safe. war is never supposed to be about yeah. how many civilians you yeah, can exactly. kill. You know, yeah. and that's that's what the Geneva Convention Mm -hmm. out or at least a subsection of them yeah and that's like where the term war crime comes from like world war ii is war crime central mm. <laughs> it's the it's like why there hasn't been another war. yeah because the rules were broken mm -hmm. everyone stepped in and a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of people died, and unfortunately, a majority of those people were civilians. Hmm. And that should never be the case for yeah. any war. And unfortunately, that leads us to our next topic, oh. which is the nuclear bomb. Yes, nuclear. which was, a, and like obviously talking about its most infamous <clears throat> use, uh, mm -hmm. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. Japan in 1945 under the um, command of Harry S. Truman. And fun mm -hmm. fact, he Harry Truman doesn't have a middle. 
He just Harry. called himself Harry S. Truman. <laughs> Maybe he's the Harry S. Truman. Sound. Yeah. What a legend. He just he called himself Harry S. Truman because it sounded better than just Harry Truman. Hmm. Here, well, wait, wait, let, let me. You know, that is what? true, man. The S for in Harry S. Truman. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, yeah, so it's it's interesting. The nuclear bomb. Yeah, he was given a middle initial but no middle name. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but the nuclear bomb today, um, there are ideas of it being used in conjunction with the previous technology, with the ballistic missiles. But uh, when they were used on Japan, uh, they were not used in combination with the ballistic missiles. They were actually physically dropped from a plane, which is an interesting thing because the pilots of that plane did not really know what was going on. They thought, oh, this is just a bombing run, right? I mean, there's no one else here. We're the only plane for some reason, but I guess we're the sole bomber. I don't know why. So that's that's pretty much what was going on. And then they were told once they dropped the bomb that they have to like fly away like really quickly and they cannot look back um, because it might blind them. And they're like, um, okay. So they got away. And so then they saw the bright light and they were like, eventually they looked behind them. And they were like, "Oh my gosh, that yeah." What well, I, I want to get the drop? it's like the direct quote uh, from who from the from pilots? from the bombers because yeah. they have the trans. Oh, they do. Yeah, let's get after, that after um, the um after they drop the bomb. Yeah. So <laughs> so an interesting the history of the nuclear bomb. It was you know developed in the Manhattan Project. You've got the scientist Oppenheimer who is famous for saying, I am become death destroyer of worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the Manhattan Project, uh, very interesting. What do you think of, do you have a lot of knowledge, Johan, on the Manhattan Project? So we, I have like a, a bit of overview knowledge of mm-hmm. the Manhattan Project, as in that it was incredibly top secret. Yeah. In fact, the vice president didn't even know it. Hmm. And when Truman actually took office, they let him know about it. And he was uh. like, what do you mean we've had this thing for like almost a year now? Like, what, what yeah. are you talking about? Because um, it was kept so well under wraps. And hmm. I also know that a big part of the Manhattan Project was also the KGB. And as we'll talk about later, the Cold War yep. stemmed a lot from Russia being informed about what was going on as they had informants everywhere hmm. and it was almost as if when uh when the u.s told russia about the bomb stalin didn't even acknowledge it like he already was aware that oh. this stuff had been going on so when they it was i think it's kind of crazy that the secret could be so well kept from the own vice president but yep. like ru- even russia knew about it hmm. yeah and i think that that's that's pretty important how um like technology spreads like as yep. soon as one country has it all of them are gonna have it yeah yeah so I, the um the transcript is like in a museum hmm. so the uh the bomber of hiroshima uh the the plane was called the enola gay hmm. and there were two co-pilots and the main one was robert lewis hmm. and he, and this was the quote I was trying to remember, but he said the um, the famous words after they dropped the bomb and he looked back. Um, he sees the the huge, and he uttered the famous remark, "Quote, my God, what have we done?" Mm. End quote. Wow. Um. Yeah. So. That is the uh, I think each bomb killed a million Japanese civilians, roughly. Uh-huh. So obviously two million in total from the initial blast. Remember, hmm. and then the, the radioactive fallout yeah, was the... damaging to the country. And yeah. I just want to put this in perspective, hmm. real quick. Before we had dropped the two nuclear bombs, uh, Little Boy and Fat Man, which were the names of the bombs. Hmm. Um, we had already decimated 40 other Japanese cities. Mm-hmm. Um, like people think that it was 
we just dropped the two nuclear bombs and like that was it done that was our entire de- dealings with japan other than the island hopping which was the um ground warfare with the japanese but no yeah. we had already destroyed like f- at least 40 other cities but hiroshima and nagasaki incredibly important cities to mm-hmm. japan and yeah. we then threatened after that if they hadn't surrendered after nagasaki to drop the bomb on their capital city of mm. tokyo so yeah. we absolutely decimated japan a hundred percent we mm. ruined it and we like burned it from the inside out mm-hmm. and of course japan obviously surrendered after nagasaki but yeah after it, we we helped them rebuild, gave them money, and you can still see that today. when you go to Japan, there are sections of it that are literally just like America, hmm. and that's because the, it, it had so much American influence. Yeah, you ever been but to Japan, Sebastian? I have not personally, but I have many friends who have been to Japan many times. Would you like to go? I would. Hmm. All right, you can. Uh, we should. We should go on a trip together to Japan. Let's do that. Let's go. Wow. But the nuclear bomb, you know, like I always think that like technology should always be advanced and all that thing mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I'm obviously like never opposed to like technological stuff because all yeah. technologies can be used for good mm-hmm. and all technologies can be used for bad, but. If I was to remove one technology from history, it would be the nuclear yeah. bomb because it's interesting cause... of its pure destructive. Because mm-hmm. the scientists and now everyone everyone's at a stalemate because yeah. it's Russia and the U.S. have enough nuclear weapons to destroy Earth like a hundred times over, mm-hmm. and it's like. It's crazy because we're all just like all at gunpoint. Like that one scene yeah. from The Office where Michael <laughs> yeah. has his two guns mm-hmm. up and Dwight has his two guns up and Andy has his two guns up. Mm-hmm. That's basically the situation with nuclear yeah. weapons. Like a little – a couple of weeks ago before the zombie virus broke out, the oh, yeah. everyone was worried about Iran mm. because we don't know if Iran has nuclear weapons. And if they yeah. do, they could – do mm. what we did to Hiroshima and Nagasaki on a yeah. much greater because our cities are much densely populated. Yeah. But it's the nuclear Wasn't bomb the Iran deal, was, the Iran deal was supposed yeah. to prevent that. I don't think it was really, was it like not doing a good job or something? I forget. I think the inspections weren't thorough enough, right? Uh, that was the objection to it. But yeah, like the, yeah, Originally, like Albert Einstein, when he was, you know, equals MC squared is the principle of nuclear power. And he was just thinking, yeah. oh, we could use this for nuclear energy. And they did in certain cases. I mean, they built a lot of nuclear reactors and they've used that for power. Um, but, you know, they also used it uh, to create the nuclear bomb. So, you know, there's yeah. good yeah. and there's bad. Um, but it's like, it's so insane because yeah. like... In the epicenter of the explosion, Mm -hmm. right, of the nuclear missile, it's – I think it's – the explosion passes from the front – it moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. It it passes from the front side of your body to the back side of your body before one neuron can fire. Wow. So you can't even comprehend it. It's like, it's not even everything goes black. Mm. It's everything just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It is such a just instantaneous, incredibly powerful thing that, yeah. unfortunately, the U.S. decided to use to target civilians. Yeah. Oh, and isn't... Which you know should the, never have been done. Yeah. Yeah. You know the um, death clock or doomsday clock or whatever? Um, mm-hmm. They put that on 100 seconds recently. The doomsday clock. Wait, what? You know the doomsday clock? The human, like, they're like a organization. Every year at the beginning of the year, they assess how likely the end of the world is. Um, they're a big, like, nuclear aware- awareness organization. 
and they put it on 100 seconds, which I think is the lowest it's gone. I think a while ago it was on two and a half minutes, and everyone was like, oh no, it's on two and a half minutes, but now it's on 100 seconds, which... Right? Like, oh lord. <laughs> yeah. That's quite scary. It's frightening. I mean, of course, they're just one organization, and I don't know. You could argue, like, oh, they're just trying to scare people, but uh, it is also kind of like, oh, uh-oh, what's happening? Um, yeah, so definitely it should – yeah, I like the um, – that you brought up about how, yeah, it should not have been used on civilians. Uh, but then there's also, like, the moral dilemma. And that, that's – I, I want to make yeah. that – that's not – even my opinion. Yeah. That is a fact going yeah, from exactly. the Geneva Conventions yep. and the general standards, what it means to be in war and what it means to be a person. That's yeah, not exactly. my political belief. Yeah. yeah. That's just literally a fact. Yeah. That it should not have been used on yeah. the Japanese citizens. I want to yeah. make that very Yeah, definitely. You hear about um, the it stories. Was... It's just it's horrific. Yeah. Like yeah. People, people going blind, of course. Hmm. People basically losing their entire family. Yeah. There was one guy that was in actually both cities. Yep. When it, it was like there was worst <laughs> luck. Yeah, there was a one guy that somehow was in both cities mm -hmm. and he survived both blasts and was mm -hmm. able to live out the rest of his life, but he had horrible medical conditions because of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, yeah. you got to think about these were civilians, mm -hmm. not even the military that we were fighting against. Yeah. And to think that we would do that to another country's people mm. and not their military is yeah. quite shocking. It goes, it, it goes against everything that war is supposed yeah. to be. And like, every, uh, like the, the worst expression ever created mm. is all is fair right. in love and war. That is the single worst expression ever created. Uh -huh. yeah. Because it's like, no. <laughs> if you love someone, don't murder their cat. Like, mm. that's not fair. <laughs> if you're in war, or don't light the planet on fire. Uh -huh. That's not fair. Yeah. Like, the reason that we have all these, uh, like, the reason that war crimes exist, the reason mm. that we have like punishments for that, or we should be doling out punishments to those who are currently committing war crimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to name any countries, <laughs> but you see what I'm trying Not to do. Not naming here. any names. But the thing is that the the pure brutality of the nuclear bomb mm. shocked the world, mm -hmm. shocked the world so much that it's never been used. In Again. any other war yeah. ever since. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah, that's, because, those are just my thoughts. In the yeah, because there I are some. Move on. Or, well, there are some who say that. Um, yeah, go ahead. That the nuclear bomb resulted in less deaths than a full scale invasion of Japan would have. Um, that is just. Yeah. And that is that is technically true, it is but, true but the deaths yeah. would have been military deaths, mm -hmm. not civilian. Well, there is the problem that a lot of the civilians would actually like die when uh, they would get in the way. The Japanese islands were taken fire. over. Yeah, it no, was, there's definitely collateral yeah. damage. Well, no, because there was also there but was the it's... there was the um, mentality in Japan of you know like uh, seppuku, like the ritual suicide, like dying yeah. with honor. Yeah. So. The civilians would actually like throw themselves in front of soldiers and they would when the islands were being taken over they were being like fed propaganda that like the Americans were like like so horrible and that it would be better if they like actually killed themselves instead of letting them be captured by Americans. So it's interesting uh because like the nuclear bomb definitely it was like definitely like against the rules of warfare that it killed a lot of civilians but then it's also a question of what would have happened if it wasn't used so it's just everything the whole situation in any conflict in war is just so awful like either way anything yeah. that happens so it's good that we're in a relative period of peace um it might not seem like that i mean to some people but that is definitely true like is peace just the absence of war? 
I mean, it's just the number of deaths, number of deaths due to yeah. conflict, you know, um, are lower now than they have been for a lot of time. I mean, we haven't had a, we haven't had a World War Three, you know, and it's yeah. been what like sixty, seventy years. So we're doing eighty years even. Yeah, like seventy five. So we're doing pretty good, but you know, it's it's like it's you just hope that it doesn't happen again. Like the last time yeah. the U.S. had to use uh, con the draft was uh, during the Vietnam War, right? And th that's what we're yeah. about to talk about. Um, but which is a perfect segue. Yeah. Yeah, but on. yeah, so <laughs> the <laughs> Vietnam War, but. Um, since then, America has not had to use the draft, and it is um, posited that today that America would likely never use the draft again because it would be to any senator that – because to in state of draft, you have to have a majority of the Senate vote for it, and at this point, that would be ending your political career if you were to vote for a draft um, in America. So people say it probably won't happen again. So maybe there's more peace, you know, maybe there's more peace now than yeah. there was. Um, it's hard to tell when you're living in it, though. Looking back, you can say, like, there was more peace in this time period than this time period. But when you're living in it, it's hard to tell. So, because there's definitely a lot of, like, worry amongst people today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hopefully things turn out for the best. That's, that's what I'm going to say. But, yeah, let's talk about the technical... Well, first, let's do a brief overview of the Vietnam War. Yep. Okay. So, the Vietnam War was a proxy war in the Cold War. And basically, mm -hmm. that means that during the Cold War, America and Russia didn't like each other mm. so much. America wanted to limit the spread of communism mm -hmm. in a fashion that they called containment. Yep. And SCP-005 has escaped containment. <laughs> basically, what they would do is they would make sure that A, countries would not turn communist, mm -hmm. or B, countries that were communist that weren't obviously the USSR um, would – like their leaders, we would often go in and do the old – where we would yeah. kill their leader, their communist leader, and replace them with a democratic leader. Or now, even a fascist leader sometimes. America yeah, was – Yeah, It in, got dicey. Um, I, I forget which country. I think it was like Guatemala. Yeah, something like that. I, I, I might – it might be – Guatemala or Chile, I can't. I'm mm -hmm. so sorry, I can't remember which one. But we swapped out the um the leader yeah. and the communist leader. Like, I'm not getting into whether I agree <laughs> with communism or don't. I don't. Yeah. But he um was amenable towards his people. Like mm -hmm. their economy was doing right. Like mm. all things considered. Then America goes in and removes him from power. I can't remember if we killed him or just, you know, yeah. got him out of there. But we replaced him with a democratic capitalist leader who ended up being a tyrant and ended yeah. up like committing an old like a little genocide in mm. his country. Yep. So America, that was obviously bad. Yeah. But the worst, the worst thing to come out of the cold is undoubtedly the Vietnam War. 100% mm -hmm. it is the worst result of the Cold War. Yep. And there were, there were good things that came out of the Cold War. Space mm -hmm. race. Yep. Space um, race. JFK was a pretty cool guy. Yeah. So he kind of lost his head. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting... <laughs> I like that you mentioned the space race. I um, I was watching this yeah. show. Um, It's on Apple TV+. Plus. It's an exclusive Apple TV+. <gasps> um, oh my <laughs> Yeah. No, don't worry. I wouldn't actually pay for that. We got it free with our like Verizon. So um, on Apple TV Plus, right, they have this show called For All Mankind, and it's an alternate history show where the Russians land on the moon in June of like June twenty sixth, nineteen sixty nine. Which, if you know um, the Apollo mission, Apollo eleven, it was July twentieth, nineteen sixty nine. So it's this alternate history where 
uh, the Russians land on the moon first. And in the end, right, in the season arc, right, they establish a moon base like America does to one-up Russia. Uh, they get, you know, a female astronaut on the moon, like, yeah. quickly. And Russia also establishes a base. And so questionably, I mean, arguably, it's like a better, more advanced future, if you think about it. Like, they have a moon base by 1972 or something like that, if Russia mm. was the first to the moon. And so, not to be unpatriotic or anything, but, you know. I like, I like to like think, pretty good. even if Russia wasn't the first on the moon, even if Russia, like, after Apollo 11, they had matched us and set foot on the moon, too, I, I imagine that we would have had to one-up them again and build a moon base. And I kind of wish that happened. Uh, in the <laughs> 60s, there was a lot of, like, futuristic sci-fi speculation of living on the moon, and then it never happened, which is so sad. It is very... We are working on that now, though. Yeah, we are. That is good. Uh, the commercial industry, or the private sector, they have come, uh, <laughs> SpaceX, and Blue Origin, and that is so great. I love that. Uh, finally getting around to doing what we should have done like 50 years ago. So props to them. <laughs> but let's yeah. let's go back into the topic. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The let's talk Vietnam about War. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vietnam War, absolutely horrific war. Yeah. One of the worst wars ever fought on mm -hmm. the face of Earth. Worst, absolutely worst thing to come out of the cold. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about napalm. Yeah. Napalm at its base is sticky fire. Mm -hmm. So they would – planes would come by. They These American troops would set like flares and markers for planes to come by and basically carpet bomb the forest where they believed Vietnamese troops to be with napalm. Mm -hmm. And napalm is fire that like sticks to you. Mm -hmm. It's a highly – it's defined as sticky jelly bombs and flamethrowers mm. consisting of gasoline thickened with special soaps. Mm. So w combined with the bombing of like that was coming from the planes, it would like destroy the forest but also destroy anyone that was hiding in the forests and – it's pretty horrific. Yeah. You know, look at napalm damage mm -hmm. to human flesh. It's it's like burn victims, except, you know, mm. a lot of civilians got caught up in the Vietnam War as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the Vietnam War, it was pretty crazy because of, like, it was guerrilla warfare, you know? Like, it was... Yeah. Um, that's the only way that a like, less technologically um, capable force has ever won a war is, you know, wars of attrition, of guerrilla warfare. And so what that meant is that you wouldn't have, you know, two fronts marching towards each other. You wouldn't have trenches lined up. You would have, like, ambushes where people would come out of the wilderness and attack people. I think that's one of the things yeah. that made it, like, so bad. But, uh, yeah, Napalm was... To, um, I don't believe it to I, that, but even if it was, it wasn't widely used mm -hmm. in any capacity. Yeah, but it was a it was a trademark of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just just such a unique invention. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was created by a Harvard student. I mm. remember that yeah. much from the preliminary research I did. Mm -hmm. But it was made by this Harvard student, and the U.S. Army ended up using it against the Viet Cong. Mm. Um, hide in the trees if there are no trees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the thing the thing was that there, again. The Vietnam War was one where a lot of civilians got caught up in mm, it. Yep. So fires would spread, hit villages that are impoverished. Mm. Those would go up. Or even worse, they could like mistake a Vietnamese ambush mm -hmm. for 
or like some village for like a Vietnamese ambush. Yeah. But yeah. any other thoughts on Napalm? Not really. I think you covered most of it. Yeah. All right. All right. Psychological warfare. Mm. Uh, again, I did I did the preliminary research for this, but you mm. guys can weigh in about what you think about this. So right. let me explain it real quick. So the logo that you have is the logo the Psychological Operations Division of the United States Army. Mm-hmm. So it is – so the Psychological Operations is a division of the Special Forces, Special Operations Forces or Spec Ops. Mm-hmm. And basically they're tasked with – and as you can see in the logo, they're tasked with – destroying or eliminating threats ways other than straight up like killing yeah. them or disabling them they go off of persuasion change and influence as their logo says and in 1955 uh well this was used throughout the vietnam war so mm-hmm. i just put 1955 as a start date yeah um they would employ what is probably the most well-known form of psychological warfare to the day and that was operation wandering soul so operation wandering Soul played with the religion of the vietnamese Mm -hmm. because they had the belief that if a person was not properly buried their soul would go wandering throughout the woods and like scream Mm -hmm. and be like just Un- unhappy and all that yeah. so obviously in times of war, people were not getting buried soldiers were left like dead in trees mm-hmm. so the psychological division of the united states army uh picked up on this and they wanted to exploit that so how they did that was with something that was called ghost tape number 10 and ghost tape number 10 was they took audio recordings and um, voice transmissions from actual Vietnamese um, citizens. Um, they took voice recordings of the Vietnamese people saying like, help me or I'm dead or mm. don't come here. And like, it, it sounds don't silly. Hurt my family. Mm. Yeah. Like it, it sounds silly, but it is like, then they used audio editing. This is audio editing in like 1950. And it's like <laughs> yeah. weirdly, well produced Mm -hmm. for like what the level was back then but they audio edited it to make it sound like absolutely demonic you can look it up you can listen to it right now um it is without without a doubt i have it is one of if not the scary life (laughs) yeah once you make it our background music oh god (laughs) once you imagine that it is you're in a forest dark at mm-hmm. night and you start hearing that stuff. Like the only other sound that can ever really compare to that was the time where I almost got struck by lightning. <laughs> whoa, and whoa. Was, I have not heard this story. Sound. You haven't heard of that story? I have not. I'm intrigued. Okay. Well, it's, it's really a cut and dry story. Okay. I almost got struck by lightning. Okay. I was out by a lake at camp E in the <laughs> middle of Mm-hmm. Nowhere, Massachusetts. Mm. And we're off by the lake. We're place. off and go water skiing uh-huh. and uh, what's it? kneeboarding. Mm-hmm. And also what we would do there was we would go sailing, mm-hmm. right? I'm out there sailing on boat as you do, right? I'm doing the ropes. I have, I have two guys with me, right? We're all talking. The sky is super cloudy. Mm-hmm. And then we hear thunder. And when, when you hear thunder, that means get the hell out of the water, <laughs> yeah. get in the van. Like we, we were transported to and from get to the lake, chopper. Uh, with, with these two massive vans. Yep. And the, um, so we turn our boat around and we dock, we like tie it to the dock and we take off all of our stuff and like they're like go 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 (laughs) right because they're worried that like we're gonna get struck by lightning and they're gonna get a massive like (laughs) fine yeah right so like i go run i grab my clothes and basically i gotta set the scene for you so there's 
in front of the lake, there's like a big grassy section, mm-hmm. and then we parked the uh, vans on the on the road that was like directly parallel, running parallel to that grassy section. Mm-hmm. The grassy section, there were bleachers on it, which is where we threw all of our clothes, right? So I run, I go, I grab um, my clothes, and I run back down the the grassy section, and. I stop. Like, there's a line getting into the van, so everyone's piling into the van. I get in. As I duck my head into the van, lightning strikes directly where my clothes had been 30 seconds ago, oh my and it gosh. lit the grass on fire. Oh my. It was crazy. It was so loud. It was so loud, and everyone like started screaming everyone was panicking i like everyone was like screaming so loud i thought i had gotten struck by lightning because it was so disorienting and it literally felt like it like if you could feel it it was such a loud sound Uh that i could like feel it reverberating in my in my bones it was crazy (laughs) but to put that into perspective operation wandering soul yeah. Which I listened to in the comfort of my own home, mm. laying on my bed, right in yeah. in my PJs. Mm. That compares t- to the lightning strike where I like was literally in danger. It is one yeah. of the most terrifying mm. sounds I've ever heard, and it was used on the Vietnamese specifically uh-huh. for that reason. Yeah, to try and make them surrender, mm-hmm. or to try and make them like not fight. Because yeah, they were scared yeah. of becoming a wandering soul. Mm. And there is a Vietnamese word for that. And that's like another name for Operation Wandering Soul. I cannot remember it. I can't even find it. Mm. But if you know it, leave it in chat. I'll read it out. But mm. yeah, that's psychological warfare. Hmm. Interesting. That is a very good, like, wow. Both stories, very good stories. Um, I have a lot of stories. Yeah. We <laughs> I should, realize. Oh my gosh, we need to have like a behind the scenes, like just chat room episode. Um, I don't know, something like that. We should figure that out. Um, yeah. Sit down and like answer questions. Yeah, we could do that. How, so Sebastian, how many times have you? <laughs> how many near death experiences have you had? Top three, top three, um, <laughs> oh <boy. laughs> lightning, jumping off a cliff, almost into a stalagmite, oh. and um, bullet ants. Oh my god! Because gosh. I would have shot myself if I had <laughs> actually gotten bitten by them. Mm-hmm. Those are my top three closest encounter death. Uh-huh. Wow. Oh, wow. oh and, or psycho camp kid, razor oh blade camp kid. Oh That's, my gosh contender but we'll keep going yeah, i'll tell those yeah. stories not on a scientific yeah, yeah. yeah. another time okay. another day yeah another day all right so m16 so yes oh, our yeah. uh, our next slide yeah. here is about the m16 mm-hmm. uh which is an assault rifle that was used a lot in the vietnam war it was basically what the u.s army soldiers used mm-hmm. And uh, there's a little statistic up at the top there that says $16.3 billion lost. And that was how much money was lost on ammunition mm. uh, while using these weapons. And that's so converted into today's money. That is yeah. converted oh. into today's dollars, yes. Um, I believe it was $2 billion in, you know, like 1960s yeah. dollars. Um, but yeah, so... The way that the M16 used to work is it used to have a single as well as a fully automatic um, firing modes. And today it has single and burst Mm. because of the soldiers. Obviously, you know, they're soldiers. They're not going to hit every single shot that they take. Um, But they were overusing the ammunition. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, as I would like to put it, spraying and praying. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, just holding down the trigger and hoping that they hit something. And so that cost the United States tons and tons of money because they kept having to ship more and more ammunition over hmm. for these soldiers to go and waste it again. Hmm. Um, 
And actually, I, I don't, I, we don't have it, but I want to see the statistic uh, if there even is one of like you know how many of those bullets were actually you know actually hit their mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably impossible to calculate, but yeah. that would be kind of interesting to see. You yeah. know. <laughs> What actually was the ratio of, you know, wasted yeah. shots to good ones? Yeah, well, probably because of all the ambush and guerrilla warfare tactics that were used, people, the soldiers were becoming more paranoid. And so exactly. they'd hear something in the woods. So they, you they know, hear fire. something in the tree, they're going to take a shot at yeah. it. Yeah, even if it's just yeah. like an owl uh, or like, yeah, something, just an animal, a squirrel, like free yeah. squirrel. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so yeah. So yeah, that's that's the M sixteen. That's uh, you know how it evolved into a uh, the weapon today and what it was used for back then. Hmm. How, have you ever fired off an M sixteen? An M sixteen? No. Have you? No. <laughs> because it's a military grade weapon. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. I was I was just giving you a little bait question there. Yeah. You I, like. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, when do you think I would have said, oh, yeah, I fired an M16 you know, in the backyard of my own. Oh, that's house. another time I almost died. Oh, All right. Man. Well, I can't, I can't even begin of, to tell that story. It's full of surprises. <laughs> we need an episode all the times that Sebastian has almost died. I know. Died. I literally, I know. I, I swear to you. Do you remember? Um, were you in my class? Uh, which year? In, in freshman year. Were you in my English class? I was not. I was in your social you studies class. Yeah, right. Okay. If you were in my English class, we mm-hmm. had to give a presentation about ourselves like in the first like month or so. Uh-huh. That was literally my presentation. <laughs> my presentation was literally a documentation of all the times I almost <laughs> died. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I bet everyone's like looking at you like, oh, don't mess with this kid. Oh, I bet, I bet you guys didn't know this. I've been bitten by a sh- what? Yes. Shark. I've been bitten by a shark. A story today. Oh my gosh. Well, anyways, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Ah, that today. explains why you're missing a leg. <laughs> mm. Uh, today. Yeah, now I only have two. <laughs> no. Anyways. So All right then. Let's move on to some of the technology that's used today in warfare. Um. So you know. There's new technologies. This is a changing world. Uh, you know, you've got the internet, you've got satellites, you've got, you know, everything. There's so much new technology. And of course, it factors into warfare. Um, so let's let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Good mythical afternoon. <laughs> Whenever I say let's talk about that, I just think of that show and I'm like, no. I yeah. Just- that's just a common phrase that people say. They can't patent. Let's talk about that. Uh, and I'm like, stop thinking about that show. Uh, but yeah, so drones. Thanks for that inner, that inner dialogue, Mac. <laughs> You're welcome. It's called Stream of Consciousness. <laughs> it's a tool in writing that appeared in like the 1920s or something. Yeah. Why do you know that? <laughs> because we're reading the sun why also. Do you, why do you know that? Because we're reading the sun also rises in English, and our teacher talked about that. I mean, the sun also rises. What else would? <laughs> Don't moon? answer that question. The moon. <laughs> the, every single star Bread? in the sky. Uh, helium. Okay, yeah, but what does it mean? The sun also rises. What... It's it's a jazz quote, on Thursdays. It's a quote from the Bible. In the Bible. It's about oh. how generations pass. They're like. Uh, like, right, we're know, not going to get into a whole life. We'll thing. all die. Anyway. The sun also ariseth, and like blah blah blah. Drones. Yes, drones. So, like with planes. Yes. Planes were invented. Then they were like, let's strap guns to them. Mm-hmm. Well, drones were invented. Then the military was like, let's make special ones and let's mm. put missiles on them. Yeah. So you've probably heard yeah. of a drone um, oh, strike. Yeah. There's a there's an entire slew of different drone types they're all yep. named after i believe i'm mm. like um u.s army drone you, you can keep talking i'm gonna do this research. yeah so this is used because you know um it it has air power you know and it's autonomous or at least remotely controlled from somewhere else so it's like a plane but if it gets shot down uh instead of you know losing the life of the pilot 
you lose like three million dollars or thirty million. Like I forget how much it costs, but I it's remember, a lot of money. Okay, yeah. I think it was like was it? I think it was like the whole escalation started when I ran, shot down a drone or something. Yes, and, yeah. yeah, and, and that US drone was. was like, uh, I said it in a different. I think it was thirty million, right? The U.S. is like that costs us. Thirty million dollars, and then Iran's like, you shouldn't have flown it in our I, airspace. I it, it's like when I you. It was more, it's like when you fly lot. your drone over your neighbor's yard, and then you know their dog just jumps into the air, destroys the drone, and then you're like, why? <laughs> that thing cost me like a thousand dollars, and then they're like, haha, sucks. Um, yeah, I don't have. Yeah, a drone, around a so. hundred and eight. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's pretty much. So what they're incredibly expensive. They're also known as UAVs or mm-hmm. air vehicles, mm-hmm. and yeah, they're, they're all named after like birds or other things that fly, huh. except for pumas. There's <laughs> just here. Listen to this. There's ravens, mm-hmm. wasps, hawks, predators. I guess gray eagles, reapers, shadows, and then there's just pumas. <laughs> That is one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> that is hilarious though. Know what I'm saying? Yep. Jesus. Yeah, so but yeah, so these drones very interesting. Uh this represents a shift in warfare. I wanna I wanna call out Pat oh. Pat Broadster for saying one of my favorite memes in chat. Oh ladies and gentlemen, say? watch your ears. <laughs> Actually, wait, no. I have the perfect thing for this. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Oh, boy. I know where oh, this boy. is going. I just read oh, the wait. chat. Here we go. Enemy AC-130! <laughs> 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 oh, or even God. more realistic. Enemy AC-130! <laughs> wow, that's quite the extensive... Voice modifier <laughs> app worth every penny. It really is. Yeah, so let's see. Oh, uh, shout out to you, Pat. Shout out <laughs> to you. Yeah, so drones. Uh, yeah. Oh, we've got another comment. Pat says thanks. Oh, yeah. Huh. That makes me think. Are we not on 30 second delay? No, we're on 30. I don't think we are. I don't think we are. I'm pretty sure we Pat's, are. Pat's been quick. He has been quick. I thought we were though. Anyways, so Pat, Pat can predict the future. He can predict the future. That's that's all. Casually predicts the future like a boss. So <laughs> drones, um, they represent a new shift in warfare, and that is that you don't personally have to be in any danger to be involved in war. Um, the book series Insignia that we are both oh, yeah. a fan of, it, and it centers around these kids that. Like, they control drones, pretty much, in space with their mind, right? Like, with neural processors in their minds. Um, And that is really the direction warfare is going in. There are so many... uh, I mean, you think of, right, like, self-driving cars, right? Why not self-driving tanks, you know? Why not self-driving anything? (laughs) Uh, If a car can do it, then why not just, like, any other piece of equipment? So, um... That is interesting because it means that there will be less risks taken, like soldiers' lives won't have to be put in danger as much in the future uh, because you can just remotely control uh, a drone or any other sort of space, or not space, any other like craft, unmanned craft. And I mean, it's interesting because it's a completely different set of skills, you know? It's like quick reaction time and like eSport type stuff, right? Uh, when people say eSports aren't sports, um, like it's about the reaction time um, versus actually being physically fit. And that might be the trend in the future. So the drones yeah. represent that. Yeah. I think you pretty much got it. <laughs> Self-driving vacuum, <laughs> says Pat Broadster. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so shall we? Move? Yeah, we shall. Satellites, which were invented in 1957, at least man-made satellites, with the Sputnik One, 
the Sputnik one. What a legend. Um, if you've ever seen the movie, uh, the Iron Giant, right? Uh, you know the dude. I watched that movie. At yep. Right. So, the paranoid uh, CIA guy, or was it FBI? You know, intelligence services. Um, that it was dude. An FBI guy. FBI. Okay. So get he, your Iron Giant facts straight, <laughs> dude. Well, you know what? FBI, CIA. What, like, come on. Central Intelligence. Uh, you better get it right. They're listening right now. That's <laughs> true. Well, Central <laughs> Intelligence Agency, Federal Bureau of Investigations, whatever. They're pretty similar. Um, anyways, I bet you don't even know what his name is. So, the guy, right? He his says. His name is Pat Broadster. <laughs> he no, says. His name is do you remember Pat the line? Steve Mans okay. You remember the line where he says. Uh, he's referencing Sputnik 1. He's like, they've got satellites. The Russians, they've got the satellites above us. Like, going boop, 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 and they're watching us, and they're blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, when he's, uh, talking to the kid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So satellites can be used for surveillance in space. If you think of Google Maps, I think Google Maps, there was, um, like, this one area on Google Maps where it looked like someone was committing a murder, but it was really not that, so then people were like, okay. Um, yeah, so satellites can be used for surveillance. And you might think, just like the airplane, which at first was used for surveillance, might it be used for war? Well, no, because um, we have signed the Outer Space Treaty from the 60s. And the Outer Space Treaty says that you cannot put weapons in space, along with not being allowed to own any part of space other than what you send up. It says that you cannot put weapons in space like it's for scientific research and progress and noble things like that. So you can't say like put a death laser in space or um, they had, let's see, there was this design for a satellite that would just carry long metal rods, right? And if you so desired, you could just have it drop Ram one of those rods. rods. Sure. Ramrods, it had a ramrod. Yeah. No, no, no. It had like a tungsten, you know, tungsten, like really heavy. Um, it's also has a high melting point, so it was able to survive re-entry. So the thought was you could put like a ton of these tungsten rods on a satellite in orbit, and if a country was giving you some trouble, you could just drop it. And just the sheer impact alone, without any explosives would be comparable to, uh, you know, like nuclear bombs. Uh, it's like a meteor, you know. So that was an idea that was floated around, and then they're like, nope, nope, you cannot do that. We've got the Outer Space Treaty. And thank gosh that we made the Outer Space Treaty. Uh, can you imagine <laughs> if there were death lasers and stuff like that in space? You know, it's good. It's good that yes, we have the Outer I Space can. Treaty. And instead it's of really ever heard of the instead of death lasers, we have you know evil governments watching us. So you know, uh, fair trade, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, satellites are used for reconnaissance. Uh, you can scout out enemy territory without ever going there because your satellite is safely a hundred miles above them, and they really can't do anything about it because. Along, uh, another part of the out, Outer Space Treaty is that you can't conduct war in space. You can't, like, shoot down someone's satellite. Even though... Star Wars! <laughs> completely obliterated. Yep. Oh my Star gosh, Wars there's... Star Wars is illegal, question mark? The thing is, a few, <laughs> Star Wars... Yeah. A few uh, nations right now have been uh, testing anti-satellite missiles, which... That's not good. They've been testing it on their own satellites, though, so they haven't been getting in trouble for it. But if they were to use it on our satellites, then we would be like, They've been hey, buddy. firing missiles at their own satellites. Just to test it. They did one test. I, I bet, like, the, the Russian government just sends out a notice. Which like, country do you think hey, it is? Wi-Fi is going to be kind of spotty today. <laughs> Which country do you think it is? Um, if you're wondering why... We're shooting down our own satellites. Which, <laughs> no, which, no, okay, okay. Which country do you think it is that's doing this? Russia. Russia. No, it's it's China. Oh, <laughs> oh. yeah. The other one. 
So, well, they, okay. It was a satellite that was... The other one. Okay. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Why is it that when there's an international crisis, it's always one of you three? <laughs> so, okay. So, um, so, no, it was a satellite that was being decommissioned. You know, satellites, they get old, and then usually what happens is instead of blowing them up, we just let them fall into the atmosphere and burn on re-entry once they uh, outlive their usefulness, right? But China, they were like, hey, we've got this old satellite. We could just deorbit it, or we could test out our anti-satellite missiles. And so they did, and they blew it up. Hmm. And it created so much space junk that people were not happy about that. Uh, they were like... Was that the plot of Gravity? Like the movie, the movie Gravity. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think I saw that. Movie. Like I, 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 I watched it mm -hmm. so long ago. I was just not mentally there. Yeah. But not because I was young or anything. Mm. I, I just wasn't there for a large section of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still, I'm still aren't. I'm but, still aren't. <laughs> I still aren't. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Like, the Russians blew up one of their mm -hmm. space junk, hit the yeah. ISS, yeah. and the Russians were like, sorry, bro, would send a rescue mission, but... <laughs> but not gonna. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. called uh, Kessler I syndrome. Got, I, got, I got, like, the oven's on. The oven's on. Yeah. I, I, like, I, can't, I, I really gotta go. My oven's on. Like, I can't These leave. cookies like, will I'm be ready in 30 cooking. minutes. Like, yeah, I can't... Like, come on, man. I've had a little to drink. I mean, you know me. Uh, so I don't think I should get behind the wheel right now. <laughs> you know, Russia's had a little bit of drink, all that. Yeah, exactly. So, and it was, it was like Sandra Bullock, who's not smart, mm -hmm. not, George Clooney, who's shape of national, mm -hmm. were going around the ISS, mm -hmm. like, trying to fix all the shrapnel that was, like, lodged inside the ISS. Mm -hmm. And George Clooney dies mm -hmm. because... Yeah, never go on a he trip went off with to Sandra go play Bullock. Batman. Never go and... on any sort of voyage with her. That is a yeah. No, Bird Box, the the yeah. bus movie, the yep. uh, the Gravity. Yeah, none of that. It's just like signing up for Doom. Oh um, yeah, her yeah. and Tom Hanks. Never go, <laughs> never go on a plane with Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, but anyways, yeah. Speaking of Tom Hanks, oh. who has appeared in YouTube videos mm -hmm. and YouTube videos are where the internet, the internet, cyber warfare, cyber warfare. <laughs> so the internet was invented. The worst transition yeah. in the history of gravity. <laughs> Probably. So the internet was invented in 1983. The World Wide web was publicly released in like 1993. So the internet has a fairly recent phenomenon. But, you know, we've become so dependent on it that nations have decided, hey, we could cause some damage by just doing a little, just pulling a uh, insert company here and taking out your Wi-Fi. I don't want to get sued, <laughs> but back in Connecticut, um, they this company that I had, like, because we, it was like they had the monopoly in the area. And so we used their Wi-Fi service. It was oh, so god awful. Oh yeah, I remember you. I hated that, that yeah. so much. I hated them. They, they okay. So they it was like they took over. It was a <laughs> a bigger company, right? A larger company, just assimilated some more area in like California or something. And then the antitrust people were like, "You own too much now, so you got to get rid of something." So they're like, "Ah, eh, we'll just drop Connecticut." Uh, so, so they dropped Connecticut and so this smaller company took, took the reins and they were so god awful. It was infuriating. I don't want to get sued by them, so I'm not going to say their name, but this company, it was like for years. So then we finally switched and it was like such a relief we switched. Um, but yeah, I was yeah. like so annoyed. Like it, it felt like once a week that like, I just not have internet for an afternoon and I'm like, gosh, all I do. Yeah, I, re I remember you giving me this exact rant. Yep. All I do <laughs> when it comes to work is the internet. Okay. Like I, <laughs> I write scripts on Google Doc. I'm I make presentations. Like I make the graphics on Google Slides. Um, 
I mean, I do the video editing on iMovie, so that's off, right? That's offline. But most of the stuff I do, my schoolwork, it's all online, okay? I am heavily reliant on the internet, okay? So I could not have spotty internet. It just, it was so horrible. And then I'd have to like go on LTE and like tether to my phone and I'd be like, this, this won't do. Like my phone's battery is draining at like 10% a minute. <laughs> so it was, it was not fun. That company, you know who you are, but I have not said your name so you can't sue me. And I, I, I do not appreciate your services, company. Anyways, yeah, so <laughs> instead of uh, a domestic threat, cyber warfare can be an international threat. When another uh, country is like, you know what, we're going to do what that company did, and we're just going to take down your internet, if you don't mind, and then, yeah. yeah. But uh, it, can, it yeah. can also be seen as um, there were, uh, I don't know, what's the correct word? Accusations, correct word. Yeah. That uh, Russia tampered with the U.S. elections. Oh. That is 100% a nice. form of cyber warfare. Yep. If, right, like, I'm, I'm not going either way. Yeah. But yeah. if Russia did tamper with that, that's 100% cyber warfare. Yep. Because that's intrusion upon another country just – Mm -hmm. the cybernet yeah but not actually cyber yeah not that cybernet hmm. weren't like a year or two ago weren't like a dozen russians indicted were they i think so so like if they set foot in oh, america then hell yeah Rush <laughs> they are you out of <laughs> um <laughs> Every well, single day, and then they ha they hacked the McDonald's. Now mm -hmm. I can't order ranch because every <laughs> time I go up to you know like the the machine kiosk thing, uh -huh. I'm like I want a burger. It's like yeah, predictable. I'm like uh, let me get pickles, and it's like uh, you mean Mick pickles. I'm like don't test me, <laughs> and it's like you want some extra ketchup. I'm like yes please. It's like would you like any other sauce? Mm -hmm. And I'm like let me get ranch dressing. I'm like, you might be like. Wait, Sebastian, where in that order do you need ranch dressing? My answer to you is don't ask questions you aren't prepared to hear the answers for. Oh, so no. I go to select ranch dressing, uh -huh. and it's like, oh, you must want honey mustard. And I'm like, <laughs> um, I love honey mustard. Yeah. Okay. You can love honey mustard all damn day. Uh -huh. You know what I love? I love, I love walking park uh -huh. i love walking in the park uh -huh. but if i see a million dollars lying at the front of my bed uh -huh. i'm not gonna go for a walk in the park <laughs> that is true that is true so i'm trying to select it's just give me the ranch right mm. and it's like oh oh you want to delete your order <laughs> good done it's like your order no longer exists. Mm. so now i look like a jack Standing in front of an entire line of obese <laughs> trying to order, they're like, they're looking at me like, why are you here? Because contrary to popular belief, I'm not fat. So I'm over there. I'm like, yo, sorry guys, but um, Hal just told me that I wasn't able to do that. So then I go up to the the human person and I'm like, yo, let me get it. Let me get a cheeseburger. Let me get extra pickle. They're like, you mean Mick pickles? <laughs> <laughs> and I turned down that mid and cyber warfare is yep. the action is the act it's defined as as I it refers to the use of digital attacks mm. such as computer viruses and hack uh, mm -hmm. by one country to just disrupt the vital computer systems of another yeah. with the aim of creating damage death and destruction so there we have departments who are Related to like cybersecurity, such as the cybersecurity, mm -hmm. and those are those are obviously very new, like relatively new, um, yeah, agencies that have been created because so much of the world relies on the internet, yeah. Um, but it's definitely like in in insignia, there were the Russian, oh, yeah, the incursions, um, right? Yeah, that could be. Yeah, 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 those. And yeah, that, that could definitely... Uh, I hope you guys liked the McDonald's run. <laughs> I, I appreciated it. I liked it. I did enjoy it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I like... Yeah, it's interesting. Um, 
I think a few months ago, there was a cell service, like the coverage went down across Europe. Uh, and then people were like, okay, is this just a company error? Or there was speculation, like, is this a cyber attack? Right? Yeah. Uh, because even if it's just like one day and like you take out like 50% of people's coverage, right? Even if you just like, that's a big, um, like that affects the economy, you know, like stocks go down for that day when the internet goes down, like things happen. So even if it's subtle and you're able to like write it off uh, as like, oh, it's just this company, like they just messed up, then you, you will do it, you know, as a, as a nation to like negatively affect your enemy. So there was, that was a bit of speculation going on, going around earlier. So yeah, no, it's scary because of mm -hmm. like the internet is like the uh, cardiovascular system yeah. <laughs> nowadays, you know? Yep. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, if... what, what do you think about cyber, cyber attacks? You ever launch one? <laughs> oh yeah. No, all the time. Uh, I play Dokubee and Siege, you know, so I'm, <laughs> I'm quite, quite well versed in uh, uh -huh. cyber attacks, but uh, no, I, um, uh, I think that it's, it's pretty scary how, Basically, everyone's on the internet now, mm. but the internet is so, so vulnerable. Yeah. And yeah. it's crazy that we rely on this one thing that can be attacked at any time and can be destroyed at any time. I mean, mm -hmm. all it takes is one virus or, you know, just one country to decide that they want yeah. to take this whole thing down. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if, like, the internet got shut off today. Oof. How many riots would there be? There would be quite There'd be a few lot. Riots. Yeah. There would be rioting in the streets. Yeah, it would not be a good day. And on the Street. sidewalks. <laughs> and the sidewalks. <laughs> they always say rioting in the streets. Uh, yeah, and the sidewalks. Um, in the parks, in the in the li in the in the goddamn um, deli. Oh. Like everyone's losing it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, cyber warfare. It is scary. Like, if if there was a cyber attack right now, how would you guys watch the Gravity Max live stream? Exactly. Your lives would be in ruin. Right? I mean, that is why this is probably the worst uh, type of warfare. This is probably the worst technology Ooh, that we have talked yeah. about. Because... Well, like, I, I, I can see that. Eh? You know. Because if, if, if there was a cyber attack, you wouldn't be able to watch the Gravity Max live stream. And I think that that yeah. is the worst war crime. Uh, it's the first item in the Geneva nuclear Convention. bombs. Bad. Yeah. Napalm. Bad. Yeah. Not being able to watch the gravity. No max gravity stream. max. <laughs> That's like not being able to have ranch dressing on your pickles. Exactly. Double exactly. <laughs> it is an atrocity. So and, yeah. And for the record, I think the. Um, McPickles double McMac cheeseburger is a Scottish last name. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's. <laughs> I believe you. Are I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, I'm Seamus double McPickles <laughs> double McMac cheeseburger. Yep. Oh my gosh. So, any other thoughts on on uh, cyber warfare? Uh, my dad works in IT, so ah. that sucks. If cyber warfare was to happen, nah, he'll be he'll get like two hundred percent, like three hundred percent pay as people call him out, like, "Yo, we need some internet." How would he be able to fix no, anything? You need no, no he wouldn't. He would just still internet. charge. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He would just charge. He would just charge extra because cool. he would have like he would have so much more demand that he could be like, "All right, all right, whoever's willing to pay the most can get my IT services." Exactly. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our final final thoughts. So this was a this was a great stream. Yep. I loved it. I think this has been the longest three stream hours. in season now, we two. We just passed the three hour mark. Yep. That and is a long stream. I'm feeling fret. Yeah, I know. And I usually be feeling like not good because mm -hmm. I've been up since three a.m. But I'm, yeah. I'm, you know. Yeah. I like. I I think we had a very good range today. We did. Because, like, obviously it's all history, mm -hmm. but I feel like branching I – th I felt like we branched off very well yeah. off of each of the top topics. Definitely. And, like, obviously, Pat <laughs> – if you're still watching, <laughs> Pat brought 
here, you stole my. <laughs> when you first came in here, I felt nothing. But now, I am so glad that you. <laughs> whether you are away or whether you are. I will never <laughs> burn down your house. <laughs> okay. I think we've all learned a bit today about how far you can go with a comedic bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just found my new best friend. Oh my god! Mm. Like me and Pat Broadster, we're gonna be, we're gonna be tearing up the streets. Is Colgate a uh, Colgate progressive car? <laughs> yep. Uh, oh my gosh! Just and we crashed that car, and you know what? It, why? Because we got progressive insurance. Yeah. I know. Name and your that's price. the secret, ladies and gentlemen. The <laughs> entire Gravity Match has just been a really long act for progressive. <laughs> I, yep. I was really tempted when we were talking about cybersecurity to make a, like, this video is sponsored by NordVPN <laughs> joke. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> if only. Yeah. This video is sponsored. Uh, oh, my gosh. So, yeah. This was a great stream, definitely. Um, Loved it. Yeah. Thank you, Johan, for being here. Yeah, thank you. You're for welcome. Coming. Thank you for Loved having me. And your rants. Yeah, yep. thanks for bringing <laughs> your knowledge. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So we'll be back next week. We'll we'll we won't be live. We'll have a pre-recorded stream for you guys. But that should be. It, it'll be a very entertaining stream. Oh right? yeah. No, you want to. You you're gonna. You don't have to be there. But you're gonna want to watch it. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, we have to make it pre-recorded due to scheduling, yeah. but you can still blow up that comment section. Yep. Hit that bell. Yep. Hit the subscribe. Yep. Yep. And, and then, and then the week good. after, we'll be live again, and we'll have another guest. I think, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yes. make sure to stay yes, tuned. Gravity Max live stream. Uh, thank you all for watching, and thank you, Sebastian, for being my co-host as always. Thank you, Johan, for uh, thank you for being on. my co-host and friend. Ah, <laughs> yes, co-host and friend. Thank you all for being my friends. Um, Yay! Yay, friendship. Yeah. Yay, friendship. I love how this is the technology of... <laughs> and we're ending off with... <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, you know, some say friendship is the best weapon. <laughs> I have never heard anyone say that. Wait, wait, let me get a quote. Let me get a quote. quote. Okay. About friendship. I spelled every single word in that <laughs> sentence incorrectly. Oh my friendship gosh. Friendship is the best weapon. Here we go. <laughs> A real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Ah. Uh, well. As I a think, good quote. I think that's a good place to end it. End the stream. Right? Uh... Oh, yeah. Any other final, last, uh, I don't know, things to say? We don't know with what weapons World War Three will be fought. Mm. But World War Four will be fought <laughs> with memes and spaghetti. <laughs> uh, will be fought with sticks and stones, Albert Einstein. Yeah, I love that quote. Um, well, I've never heard that one. You haven't? Well, anyways, uh, we will see you all next time. Goodbye.